sports exclusive. Welcome to the 1986 college football season on ABC. The University of Nebraska campus where it's pouring rain. The Cornhuskers tonight host the Florida State Seminole. The Nebraska football team again considered one of the top ten teams in the country. Florida State may very well deserve top ten consideration themselves. The 144th consecutive sellout for a Cornhusker home game. Once again, Memorial Stadium at kickoff, the third largest community in the state of Nebraska. ABC Sports presents CFA Football. The Florida State Seminoles and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Nebraska has lost running back Doug DeBose, a Heisman candidate to a season-ending injury which thrusts sophomore quarterback Steve Taylor to the fore as a principal offensive figure for the Cornhuskers. Another sophomore quarterback, Chip Ferguson, becomes the key man for the Florida State Seminoles. Good passer, good field leader, trigger man for the freewheeling Seminoles. A year and a week ago, we were here in this very place for a Saturday afternoon game. The temperature was 103, and the field temperature 135, but you can see what it is tonight. It's downright wintry, and we are fearful that the rain may continue through most of our game tonight, and it certainly may well have an impact on what happens down on the field, because I don't care if you are on artificial surface, it makes it more hazardous in handling the football and sometimes in throwing the football. And now the Seminoles are ready. Here comes Florida State into the stadium. Florida State Seminoles have played a ball game already this year. They defeated Toledo by a score of 24 to nothing, had another fine season last year, and Bobby Bowden, the head man in his 11th year there, one of the top coaching records in the country. And now the roar starts to build for guess who? The Big Red of Nebraska, and it's an, an incredible stat that they have sold out this stadium 144 successive times. And this man, Tom Osborne, in his 14th season, one of the top records in all of college football, ranked third among the active coaches with a winning percentage. And you can see the Huskers look like they are jacked up for the opener because they remember well losing 17-13 here a year ago when Florida State held them scoreless in the second half on that hot afternoon. And they know well, too, that if they get out of the blocks against Florida State, the rankings might well go up. feels as much relief as the football team having been able to get over this ticket scam over the past few days but I think everybody feels a little relieved in Lincoln right now and the fact that the Oklahoma Sooners their arch rival won big this afternoon over UCLA probably has them jacked up a little bit too because they kind of want to match everything the Sooners do and take this thing down to the end of the season but the the matter of 60 players having to sit out a ball game as a result of an NCAA directive regarding uh, mishandling of some uh, complimentary admissions by the uh, Nebraska football players a year ago. That decision has been appealed. It has been stayed. All players will play tonight and will get a decision next Tuesday from the NCAA Appeals Committee on the immediate future of those 60 players. But let's not dwell on that. Let's turn to a new face sitting alongside me now for 1986, replacing the redhead from Decatur. The great football coach at the University of Arkansas, Frank Broyles, sat here for nine years and we miss him. There's no question about it because the two people you're looking at right now, we hope we're among Frank Royal's great friends. But the Irishman from Maryland, Tim Brandt, moves into the analyst position now and becomes my colleague for the season. And let's go quickly, Tim, if you will, to the impact of all of this hassle and turmoil from the NCAA and what it might have 
had to do with the preparation for the Corn Oscars for the opener. Keith, there is no doubt about the fact that it had to affect the concentration of these players. Some players said they were angry, others said they were frustrated at the NCAA ruling, and Wednesday, as you mentioned, they didn't even know if they were going to play this ball game. It has been an ongoing investigation, and it is one that has had a definite impact not only on the players, but on the coaches, as Tom Osborne told me earlier just how much. We spent a lot of time as a staff, and I did personally, uh, trying to get a response together for a hearing that was scheduled out in Colorado Springs on uh, August 17th that was then subsequently uh, postponed or canceled. And and uh, so we did spend a lot of time on it. And then, of course, the uh, last few days have been a little bit hectic, uh, you know, even at one point the game being somewhat in, in jeopardy or in doubt. And actually that affected the players a little bit more. But I, I think that after... Uh, period of 24 hours that things kind of settled down and, and we really didn't lose that much. This has been a tough preseason for Nebraska. First, the loss of Doug DeBose, the Heisman Trophy candidate, out with a knee injury. That would hurt any team. Then the NCAA ruling. But I think this is just the kick in the pants this Nebraska team needs to get off to a quick start. They can rally around this adversity. Now, this is a young team, but it is also a very deep team it is raw talent and it is young but it is deep and the key player there is quarterback steve taylor now last year nebraska completed only 55 passes all year steve taylor can run and he can throw and it is that double threat that concerns florida state coach bobby bowser i think it can make them a great ball club again nebraska like they were is a turner gill at quarterback and if taylor becomes that guy or clayton or one of them i think they're in you know now, the best thing that could happen to us is if we could pressure this young man. Uh, there'll be times when we will try, you know, and then we might see that he, he might be one of those guys that can kill you with pressure. But we're going to try to test him both ways, and I'm sure they're going to test Chip both ways. And that's, well, let's see, see who can protect the quarterback the best can be the key. Serious record between these two teams uh, covered only four games in the contract. This will finish it. Florida State has won two out of the three times here in Lincoln in this stadium. And tonight's ball game, an ABC Sports Exclusive being brought to you by but Nissan. Uh, Test drive the new choice. Nissan hard body trucks at your Nissan dealer now. By STP Corporation on the world's racetracks on the world's roads. STP, your car care company. By Sears New Century, come see all the ways we've changed and all the ways we haven't. And by the American Express car. Don't leave home without it. Two out of three Indy drivers rely on STP oil treatment. Because when it comes down to it, STP adds extra lubrication to reduce engine wear in whatever you drive. STP is the racer's edge. Want to see this dull, dry hair disappear like magic? Try some magic. A touch of VO5 hairdressing's five natural conditioners makes hair easy to manage, healthy looking, and naturally neat. Try some magic. VO5 every day. Billy D. Williams on body language. You know, body language tells you a lot about what a person's thinking. For instance, that means she has an interest in the finer things in life. That means she also wants a little fun in her life, but only with the right man. And now she's pouring a Colt 45. And we all know what that means. You mind if I join you? You must have read my mind. Something like that. The power of Colt 45. It works every time. It swept a nation off its feet and into a world war. Turning men into heroes. We shall never surrender. And heroes into legends. There is nothing to do now but win the war. Relive the legend in Herman Wolk's historic masterpiece, The Winds of War, starting tomorrow. A notable Nebraskan. At this time of year, there are only two things on my mind. Power and blowing wide paths through the opposition. As far as I'm concerned, there are only two things that fill that card. And you know what one is. The other is my snapper snowblower. I call it Big Red, too. Take it from me, Bob Devaney. Snapper power products take on all the competition. See b and Small Engine, Lincoln, Westlake Ace Hardware, Omaha and Bellevue, and BK Moore, Omaha. Feel good about that.
Tim Lampley in New York. Before Nebraska begins its bid for the national championship, let's take a look at what happened to six other teams which are also regarded as having a chance. In a battle between two contenders, Oklahoma, ranked number one, smashed UCLA at home, 38-3. Another game between two potential contenders, Miami beat Florida at Florida, 23-15, snapping a 21-game unbeaten home string for the Gators. Alabama won for the second time, beating Vanderbilt 42-10. And Penn State, in its first ever night home game, has jumped out to an early lead of 24-0 in the second quarter against Temple. Now to Keith Jackson and Lincoln. Well, let's see how high the feathers fly as Dale Klein, the senior kicker from Stewart, Nebraska, will knock it deep for Keith Walsh and Darrell Holloman. Kicking from the 35-yard line, it comes down to Holloman. The junior from Tallahassee has got a hole up the middle. He comes out to the 25, and that's where the Seminoles will go to work with this offensive alignment. And the young man, Chip Ferguson, at quarterback, figures to be very important, particularly on a wet, cool night. Chip Ferguson is a sophomore, but he is a very good field general with a multi-offense to work from. So let's see what happens as Chip comes out looking for his third consecutive win, I guess it is, a fourth consecutive win as a starting quarterback. He stepped in when Danny McManus was injured a year ago and did a fine job for Bobby Bowden Seminole. From the 26-yard line, Carrying the ball is Victor Floyd at six foot 195. A sophomore out of Pensacola is brought down by the middle guard, Danny Noonan. Danny Noonan and Chris Bachman are two potential All-Americans. The All-Americans last year, in some people's opinion, and Timmy, they are two horses on the defensive front. Keith, they really are. Spockman and Noonan. Now, if they occupy three offensive linemen, if it takes three offensive linemen for Florida State to block them, then the advantage, obviously, right away, would go to Nebraska. <laughs> Ball is given away. The man carrying the ball is Dane Williams. He bounces outside and almost got around the corner, but that's a good defensive play by the linebacker Mark Munford coming off knee surgery. Remarkable comeback for Mark and one of the premier players at that position in the country. The two Nebraska linebackers are really something. Munford and Kevin Parsons. They're both big enough and they're both quick enough to do almost anything asked of them by their defensive coach, Charlie McBride. They say from that knee surgery that Munford lost a step. You couldn't tell on that play because one thing he has is experience. No false step goes immediately to the football. Third down after a loss of two. Third down and 12. And into the middle goes Victor Floyd again. And Floyd pops it out of there. The ball pops away from him. It's still rolling around and is finally covered by Florida State. Mark Selva, the right guard, got up field facing that elusive wet big skin and he brought it down in Florida State possession and it'll be first down for the Seminoles. You know, one of the keys here for Florida State is having played a football game. They had an opportunity to work out the wrinkles to iron out some of the problems. Now, last week against Toledo, they fumbled the ball five times and lost three of those. Here's the fumble. They get this one back, and actually it helps them out. They not only have the first down, but now they're in Nebraska territory. Yeah, they picked up 12 yards on the fumble from the 43-yard line. Chip Ferguson's first pass of the night. He's got a man wide open, number 24, Darren Holloman. Darren is not all that big, 5'7", 170, but... He is so quick, and when Ferguson can find him among all the giants out there on the field, he can be exciting. Bobby Bowden says this youngster, Chip Ferguson, is going to be as good as the other two Florida quarterbacks, Testaverde and Kerwin Bell. He is poised. The challenge will be whether he can read the defense. Now, Nebraska stays in a basic defense, but they try to disguise everything they do and confuse Ferguson. It's first down, Florida State. Just outside the Nebraska 30-yard line, Ferguson hands the ball off to Floyd. Floyd trying to weak side it, come back over on a misdirection to the left side. But Danny Noonan, 6'4", 280-pound senior from Lincoln, is there to meet him. Tom Osborne, a brilliant career, quiet man, Lovely man, he really is. He's, he's, he, at times, if you don't know him, you think he's almost unemotional about this thing, but he believes in keeping an even tempo on the sidelines, and if he's going to do it, he's got to be that way himself, and he is. It is second down and 10 at the 30 of Nebraska. The Seminoles with their first threat of the ball game, and Ferguson drops on second down. He goes down the middle with it. Floyd is there. He's got it. Touchdown, Florida State. Number 27. Floyd. A post pattern with the tailback carrying himself down the middle and a perfect pass by Ferguson in front of Siebler. Keith, you always have to look for that number two receiver. He's the most dangerous person 
on that offensive scheme. They put two receivers out to the right side. Floyd came right down the middle of the zone and split the seam and was wide open for the touchdown. He took a lick at the goal line, but being a tailback, he carried it on through once he had his hands on the ball. Derek Schmidt for the extra point. He has never missed one. Never. High school or college. 89 and for 89. Hooked it a little bit, but he got it through it as a flag. There's a penalty flag thrown. So let's see whether or not the point will stand at 12 11 to go in the first quarter. The referee tonight is Paul Schmidt. Out of the Southern Independent Association, I believe he is. Umpire is John Linebeck. You'd have a split through Big Eight at Southern Independent. Jim Brasher, a headlinesman, Paul Brown, the line judge, is going to be against Florida State. Bobby Bernard, the field judge, Michael Borgard, the side judge. We have a legal judge, procedure. We did not have enough men on the offensive line of scrimmage. Five yards. So they attack five on to him, and Bobby Bowden now is walking around looking for the special teams coach, and what are you doing? Get him up there. These are the problems they were supposed to have worked out this past week. The ball is put down at the 15. The kick by Schmidt is up again, and he's good again. So he keeps his string intact. He's 90 for 90 on extra points. And so at 12-11 to go in the first quarter, Florida State takes the opening kickoff, and they stick it in the end zone. The measure of a champion. It's not just a matter of inches, but a matter of degree. It's the determination to deliver the extra margin of performance that results in being the best. We know we're the champion spark plug company. And right now, we'll donate a dollar in your name to U.S. Amateur Athletics when you buy a set of champion copper plugs. The spark plugs that deliver an extra margin of performance, proving they are America's best. It's time you said bye-bye, basic. Hello, Sentra. The all-new Nissan Sentra for 87 is much more than basic transportation. It's newly designed with a longer wheelbase, smoother ride, and superior handling. So say bye-bye, basic. Hello, Sentra. Who made their most affordable car even better? The name is Nissan, America's number one... Floyd, the young man that hauled in that 30-yard pass for the touchdown to put the Seminoles on top seven to nothing. Ferguson, two out of two in that possession, 43 yards, including the TD. And now the Seminoles will kick off to Nebraska with Vaughn Shepard and Terry Rogers deep. Derek Schmidt will do the kicking. Keith Jones normally would be the man returning the kicks, but he's got to be the eye back because of the injury to Doug DuBose. The kick falls at the nine-yard line taken by Vaughn Shepard. And Shepard out of St. Paul, Minnesota, with a good, strong run back. Comes outside the 30 to the 33. This is the way the Huskers line up. And we noted that Jones has got to be the eye back with DuBose gone. He'll be very important. But it is the young man at quarterback, Steve Taylor, a sophomore out of the San Diego area in California, that has to pull the trigger for this Nebraska team. And you can bet the ranch on it that Florida State is going to try to get in his face quickly. You may see some stunts and blitzes. They're going to mix up their coverages and try to confuse him. He's got it. Taylor turns around the corner and heads up the sidelines for the first down as he goes to the 48-yard line, and that's exactly what Bobby Bowden was talking about when he said he was worried to death over it. The defensive alignment for the Florida State. And those inside linebackers, Jones and McGowan, will be a key, I think, for the Seminoles, don't you? Absolutely. You know, the coach has told the middle guard, Thomas Harp, if he doesn't make a play all day, don't worry about it. Just occupy the blockers so McGowan and Jones can get in the pursuit lanes and make the hit. Dana Brinson comes in at a wingback spot now. A sophomore from Valdosta, Georgia. Turned up field too soon, but he got away with it. The handoff goes to the... High back Keith Jones, who's in there at about 195 pounds, a junior from Omaha, and he is brought down by the nose guard of Florida State, Thomas Hart. Thomas is uh, not exactly a small fellow. You've got to take four or five steps to get around him. He's 6'1", 285 pounds. He also has pretty good speed. You watch him. He's got good mobile ability. Second down and seven now for Nebraska. 
as the rain for the moment appears to have stopped. Ball goes to Keith Jones. Slips away from one tackler, gets down to about the 45. And the young man working the sidelines as our reporter this year in college football is Al Krautwig. And let's go join Al right now. Keith, a few minutes ago, I couldn't help but think Tim Brandt picked a heck of a night to leave the sidelines and come to the booth. It was raining, but it has now stopped. The field, however, is still very slippery. Oh, Todd. See what I mean? Back to you. Well, at least he didn't get a stomach burn out of it. Third down and two. Ball just inside the 45. Steve Taylor with the ball. Got his helmet about the marker. But I think the ball is going to come up a half a yard short as Paul McGowan, one of those inside backers, and the free safety Greg Newell bring him down. Those two numbers, uh, 55 and 38, Jones and McGowan, you're going to see those numbers all night. So let's get familiar with them right now. Key, the key is no false step. His first immediate move is toward that football. He gets over, gets in the line of traffic, and although he doesn't make the play, he clogs things up, gets in the way, and helps pursue. Fourth down, Nebraska's going for it. They're gambling. The ball is out at the 42-yard line. They go inside. Jones, second effort, just barely gets the first down. That is a gamble. This early in the ball game, the team down 7-0. He bounced off Thomas Hart and was able to get the first down. Well, I'll tell you, Tom Osborne with that quiet approach to the game, but there are times when he's a riverboat gambler, and this is one of them. Tom Osborne, one of the most successful coaches in college football, has a burr under his saddle because he lost his glove in the opener last year. Very true. It is a first down. The ball is at the 41-yard line. Kalen, the fullback, has it. Big Ken Kalen hammers his way to about the 36. He succeeded Tom Rathman. And a year ago in the Florida State game, Rathman had a big play in that ball game. And Tom is now with the San Francisco 49ers. Fourth play from scrimmage. Rathman broke it off and scored early against Florida State. Big play there, but Kalen played in all 11 games last year. He was a walk-on in 1982. Played eight-man football in high school. A lot different here in Nebraska. He's number 49, Keith Jones. is the eye back. He's number six. And in motion comes Vaughn Shepard. And Taylor's looking for the pass. Gets it off. Pass is caught by Stitzler. Uh, Jason Gamble it is. Jason Gamble had come in at the wide receiver spot, split in. He may have fumbled, he did. Florida State's got it. So on the hit, Stitzler, uh, Gamble lost control of the football, and the Seminoles come up with a turnover. Forget the fumble for a second. This is a young quarterback, and this is the dimension that we were talking about that is going to make this a much tougher offensive football team. He rolls to the right and immediately sees his receiver and throws across his body. A difficult pass, but he has his man in the hook zone, and it's complete. It was four fumbles last year for Nebraska. That lost that game, it at least was a main part of that loss. It'll be Florida State football when we come back. Panasonic, the future of office automation. Advanced equipment with an extraordinary concept. The easier, the better. Panasonic offers solutions to your special computer problems. High-speed microprocessors, high-resolution monitors, and high-performance printers, which make them a very easy choice. Panasonic computers and computer peripherals, like our typewriters and copiers, the easier the better. Panasonic Office Automation. Here's Nissan affordability in the hottest new trucks in 25 years. The hard bodies. New Nissan trucks, they're built tougher. New Nissan trucks, they work harder. New Nissan trucks, they look harder. Get the biggest cargo box and most powerful engine of all the leading standard compacts. And get them both in Nissan's lowest sticker price truck. Fuel injected. Hard bodies. You need a hard body. The name is Nissan. Pairings are now complete for the finals in the United States Open Tennis Tournament, as in an upset in the second men's semifinal, Miloslav Machir of Czechoslovakia defeated Boris Becker in five sets, winning the fifth set 6-3. So now, four native-born Czechoslovakians will play in the finals tomorrow. In the women's final, Martina Navratilova, winner today over Steffi Graf against Helena Sukova. And in the men's final, Machir against top-seeded and heavily favored Yvonne Lendl. Now back to Keith Jackson and Lincoln. 7-0 Florida State, just under nine minutes remaining to play in the first quarter of the ball game. As the Seminoles recover the Nebraska fumble, 
on their own 23-yard line. Pass was completed to Gamble. Jason coughed it up on the hit. And now Chip Ferguson sets him from the 23. Stands up. Quick pop pass. Good. Caught by Herb Gaynor. And the junior from Sarasota is across the 35 to the 36. Boris Becker beaten today at the U.S. Open Tennis Tournament. All four of the finalists is Men and women are Czechoslovakia. First down and 10. The ball is on the 36. Florida State, freewheeling offense, moving the football against Nebraska here in the first quarter. Huskers hurt themselves with the turnover. First down, just over the 36. Ferguson hands the ball off. Goes to Dane Williams, a big sophomore out of Fruitland Park, Florida, at 225 pounds. He's knocked down at the 34, so he's going to lose about two yards. We talked about Danny Noonan and Chris Buckman, the two defensive linemen, the keys for Nebraska's defense. Have a look at them. 76 and uh, 95. They're being tackled is what they're doing. Noonan takes him out anyway after he was tackled. They're double teaming these two guys occasionally, and the old adage is two men on me, somebody's got to be free. Ferguson quick, two stepper, pops it again to Gaynor. Gaynor shakes one and then takes a heck of a lick up around the 44 yard line by Charles Fryer. Fryer really hit him, but Gaynor pops right up, just short of the first down. That old Bobby Bowden, he is slick as they come. He knows he had to rebuild his offensive line. He knows Nebraska traditionally has a good defense, and old Danny Noonan is there, so you know what he's doing. He's got Chip Ferguson taking a real quick three step drop and getting rid of the ball before Nebraska can come across that line of scrimmage. It is third down and two for the Seminole. Lloyd and Williams are set wide. Going to throw it again. This time, Gaynor missed connection. He had him. He was available. He certainly was, and uh, the pass was right on the money, and Gaynor apparently broke the play because all he had to do was stop, and he had the first down. So in comes Lewis Berry now to do the punting for Florida State. He's a good one, one of the best in the country. Going deep, Vaughn Shepard. And number 33, Dana Brinson. The two wingbacks will do the punt returning. Barry's kick is away. Not a particularly good one. He had to reach a little bit to get it. And he never got his rhythm, and he does not come up with a particularly good punt. The ball is marked out at the Nebraska 29 with Florida State leading 7-0. Fixing this water damage will cost $1,200. Could I have prevented it? You could with Thompson's water seal. This water damage is going to run $750. What would have stopped it? Prevent water damage with Thompson's water seal. Simply brush Thompson's on wood, brick, or concrete, and it penetrates to form a barrier water can't get past, even when driven by 98-mile-per-hour winds. This time, I'm going to protect my new deck with Thompson's water seal. A great defense against repair expense. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't be buttoned up? And down the earth underneath it all. Who says you can't have super premium taste and a less filling beer? Make a long life. Oh, yes, you can. Make a long life. Oh, yes, you can. The New York Giants feel this could be their year. The Dallas Cowboys have pinned their hopes on the backfield of Rosette and Walker. It's the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The 26-yard punt by Lewis Berry leaves Nebraska first down at their own 29-yard line. And now the Huskers will have their huddle, and they'll go to work with 7 minutes and 43 seconds remaining to play in this first period. They're playing all of their players tonight. Next Tuesday will be a decision on what kind of a penalty will be assessed against the Huskers. How many players might have to sit down because of the infraction on, uh, on admission to the game, the complimentary admission. The handoff goes to the eye back Keith Jones. Jones up to about the 31. Earlier today, I was visiting with Tom Osborne, and into the conversation came the question as to whether or not controlling those admissions is an enforceable rule. Most coaches say no. Well, it's difficult, and uh, the NCAA and AA investigators, uh, when they first came in, said it was an unenforceable. They said, don't worry about it. Now we've got something to worry about. But we think the penalty is a little bit excessive, and 
What I'd like to see happen, Keith, would be to have the players find some passes, which here in Lincoln, Nebraska, is a big deal because you can't even get your folks into a game if you don't have a pass. You can't buy a ticket. And the other thing I'd like to see maybe be some community service work. You know, kids will listen in the area of drug education, fifth, sixth graders, seventh, eighth graders. When our kids go into school, they'll listen. I'd like to take a couple days off practice and maybe do some kind of work like that. I think that would be appropriate. But to take eligibility away, I think, is too harsh in this case. I'm in the Nebraska coach Tom Osborne, and you just saw Vaughn Shepard, the wingback, take that football in a little misdirection play, the old wingback counter, and he found a hole over there, got out there, and got a heck of a block from somebody that cleared him to pick up a first down for the Huskers up on the 46. That somebody was young Keith Jones. They sent him in motion, new offensive scheme that Nebraska showed Florida State that time. Going in motion this time as Prince of the wingback turns it upfield. Down the line comes uh, Taylor. But the ball is given away to the fullback, Kalen. And Kalen crosses into Seminole territory to the 46. Brought down by Greg Newell. Newell at 195, Kalen at 225. They say the biggest improvement of a football team comes between the first and second weeks of the season. Florida State obviously has played a game, had a chance to iron out the problems, shake out the wrinkles. Nebraska has not. And thus far, uh, Florida State offensively looks a little bit sharper than does Nebraska. Look at this. Another new alignment Nebraska is showing. As Taylor fakes it, was going to go down the line with it. But number 79, Big Gerald Nichols, who is one of the fine defensive tackles in the country, 260-pounder out of St. Louis, decked him. Brought in two tight ends, went to a power eye formation with all three in the backfield. But Gerald Nichols, big, strong senior, the only returning starter from last year on that defensive line, 260 pounds. Good nucleus to build around. It is third down now, and call it two. Taylor coming on the option, turns up field, gets just enough leverage to pick up the first down as he will be marked inside the 42. Fred Jones, the inside backer, brought him down. Fred is 6'3", 240, a senior out of Miami. Taylor is 5'11", 195, a sophomore from San Diego. Nebraska has to go back to the pass a little bit more. They've thrown one time. It was complete, and they lost the fumble. They can't shy away from it. They completed only 55 passes last year, and when a team doesn't throw, the defense can surround you. Load up. Just inside the 42, first down for the Huskers. Back to the straight eye formation now. Stitzler is wide. Taylor stands up, wings it over there. Pass is thrown to Shepard. Shepard is grabbed just short of the line of the uh, first down markers. So they'll be looking now at second down and about one. The key man, of course, was to beat Doug Dubose. I back for Nebraska down, and his career perhaps at the college level ended by a knee injury. Let's spend a moment with him as he talks with Al Crosswick. Okay, Keith, Doug, this must be a very difficult time for you. Oh, yes, uh, it's real hard watching uh, my teammates play a game and, and knowing I'm supposed to be out here my last year, and I really wanted to play with these guys on my last year going out. Doug, how has it affected the, the way you're going to prepare now for what lies ahead? You've got a lot of work to get that knee back in shape, and now your professional chances may be hurt. Oh, well, I think it's going to make me work a little bit harder. I don't think it's hurt my professional chances at all. Um, you know, I really never had to work for nothing. Everything uh, all my life uh, as a running back has came kind of easy to me. And uh, now that I got this injury, you know, made me realize a lot of things. And, and I think I'm going to work my leg as hard as I ever worked before. And, and I know when I work, it, I, I only come out and, and, uh, and a lot of good things happen to me. So I'm expecting good things to happen to me when I come back. All right, Doug, have a good rehabilitation. Thank you. Keith. Thank you, Al. First down for Nebraska at the Florida State 29. As, as the quarterback Steve Taylor picked it, that'll get a flag. Ken Kalen lost his concentration and broke the play. This is a no counter. Uh-uh, won't count. Pass was caught by Ray Nelson in the end zone, but everybody in the stadium saw Ken Kalen move too soon, and it wipes it out. It showed me something about Steve Taylor, though. They always teach you if you're going to make a mistake, make it full speed. Even though the whistle had blown and the flags were flying, he went ahead, carried the play out, and threw it. And completed it. And completed it. You'll see here the fullback jump. All right, now the fullback does stop. Rather than just digging it into the hole, that's when somebody can get hurt. Taylor, though, carries out the play. Well, I think the impressive thing about him uh, here, though, is he throws that ball on the run, and he throws it right on the money. That's a strong arm. So they are assessed the five yards to make it first down and 15. The ball back to the 34. Go back to the power eye. 
Taylor still got it. Turns up field. He's excited. He's down to about the 27-yard line, and he took a lick, and he's slow to get up, but he's hit hard by Stanley Shiver. And he is as hard a hitter as you're going to find on the field. Coaches say that he can be the best quarterback ever in Nebraska. He idolized former Husker Turner Gill. You can see his speed. He's got very good feet. He also Second has good eyes, eight. and that's what it takes Long to be a good quarterback, or a good athlete, for that matter. He reads things. He feels things. He's got what they call fast twitch muscle fibers. He can dart in a second. Say what? I don't know. It sounds good. <laughs> First down, Taylor. Taylor back gives to Jones. Jones is grabbed right at the line Ball of scrimmage. And Thomas Harp is the man making the penetration on the second down play. And uh, brings him down. Thomas Harp, 55. Ball is just short of the 33-yard line. And so now third Nebraska down, is nine. looking at Ball third down and about 10. Time remaining in the first quarter of play. Florida State leading by a score of 7 to nothing. Took the opening kickoff. Right down the field, put it in the end zone. Rob Stitzler and Vaughn Shepard are the wide people now for the Huskers. They're strong right. Jones looked like he wanted to blitz, but the long count got him outside. Jones, Jones hit behind the line of scrimmage by Deion Sanders, number two. A fiery sophomore out of Fort Myers, Florida. Another outstanding athlete for the Seminoles. Dale Klein is coming on with the kicking tee now as Nebraska will make an effort to get on the board with a 50-yard field goal. The tee is put down on the 40. This is an important field goal for Dale Klein. He's the kind of kid, he came out and set an NCAA record 7-for-7 seven seven against Missouri, but he also is streaky. If he misses his first one, he'll play a game of mental gymnastics with himself. He gets shaky. Make it a 49-yard field goal as they move the tee up a yard. Cleet Bakeman will do the holding. He is a quarterback. The snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is up. And he couldn't squeeze enough distance out of it from 49 yards. It is just short and slightly to the right, perhaps. And so the Nebraska Cornhuskers are turned away at 1.50 to go in the first quarter. Have you looked at Allstate homeowners insurance rates lately? Nope. They may be lower than you think. They are low. Leave it to the good hands people. Leave it to the good hands people. Bring your policy into Allstate and compare. See how low our rates really are. Leave it to the good hands people. Wow. They're low. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. When you buy a Nissan 300ZX, you buy a legend. A tradition of many Z cars. Each meticulously made to the tolerance of an expensive watch. You buy a racing heritage unmatched by any car in its class. But most of all, when you buy the awesome 300ZX, you buy Nissan, America's number one selling import car. The name is Nissan. On the Disney Sunday movie... There he goes! Fall into fun with your favorite bear. bear. <laughs> Join Winnie the Pooh and friends Sunday. Tenth rated in the UPI poll, Tennessee is without ten players tonight in the wake of a Knoxville Journal report that they were guilty of the same kind of ticket transgressions which almost cost Nebraska half its team. Shouldn't be a problem at home against New Mexico with more than 90,000 in the stands. Keith Davis has a 46-yard run and replacement field goal kicker Phil Rich on for the suspended Carlos Rivez kicked a field goal. Ten-nothing Tennessee in the second quarter. Keith? And here in Lincoln, the rain is still quiet, though so it is still a wet, very cool, gray evening as darkness now begins to settle across the Nebraska Plains and Florida State leading 7-0 with a football just outside the 32-yard line. Floyd and Williams are the split backs for the Seminoles, and Chip Ferguson, the quarterback, to throw it. He goes to the sideline. Uh, the pass is forward. Was it caught? No. It all, almost was a reception by Floyd and a fumble. But the official right there said, no, he never had control of it. It's Brian Davis, the quarterback, laid a lick on him. And if there's any doubt, of course, it's an incompletion in the rule book. But this is Ferguson, who takes a pretty good look after he delivers the ball. But again, the pass is on the money. It was a tough catch for Floyd. He pulled it in over his left shoulder. And then, of course, the defensive back 
who read the play. Wide as the widest, deep as the deepest, out of that Nebraska zone defense, came in and made the lick and separated him from the ball. Ferguson is now four out of six on this passing. Second down and ten. Ball is given away to Victor Floyd. Finds some daylight over the left side of the line. And you know what? That's the third time now that uh, Florida State has found some running room over the, the left side or defensive right, right side of the 19, Nebraska line. Eight, Lee Jones and Tony Holloway are the people on that side for Nebraska. They're not messing too much with the Messrs. Buckman and Noonan right at the moment. And very wise on the part of Florida State. It's third down and about six. It'll be a short six for the Noles. Ball is out near the 37. Ferguson back, a quick drop, looks around. Now he puts it away to the sidelines, and the pass is incomplete. Thrown out of bounds. Herb Gaynor was over there, but uh, Gaynor got one hand on it, and that was all, as he had good coverage by Nebraska. So it's fourth down to Lewis Perry. Now we'll come back to play. His first kick was a 26 yarder. The two people going deep. You see if they send through this time. We see that uh, Dana Brinson. Wing back is back there, and he's back there by himself this time. They got ten men on the line of scrimmage. Ten red shirts up there. They're going up to Barry. Good protection for Lewis. Gets the kick away. And Brinson makes a mistake. I think he lets the ball bounce. He had oh, he picked it up and took off. And he is picked off at about the 22-yard line. I think he sensed that their thing might be opening up a bit. Florida State might give him a chance to pop out of there with it. Keith, you're exactly right, though, when you say that's a mistake. There are four don'ts of the kicking game. Don't be offside. Don't rough the kicker. Don't let the ball hit the ground, and then don't clip. He let the ball hit the ground and should have made the catch. So it is first down for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The uh, ball up near their 23. And you've got Kalen and Jones lined up behind Steve Taylor. No, it is not uh, Jones. Yeah, I mean, Kalen, it's Micah Heibel and John Kelly. So the second combination is in there right now for Nebraska. John Kelly, the I-back, and Micah Heibel, uh, the fullback. Well, ABC Sports will premiere the first presentation of uh, Monday Night Football with the New York Giants and the Dallas Cowboys coming out of Texas next Monday at 9 Eastern time. Expecting to see Herschel Walker get some action in that ball game. Ball goes to John Kelly. John is a 205-pound junior out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Like a high bull is 220 pounds. He, too, is a junior and also from Lincoln, Nebraska. It's unusual, I think, to find two uh, players of that quality both coming from the same uh, hometown. And it happens to be the hometown of their university. The first quarter is over. So after 15 minutes of play in Lincoln, the Florida State Seminoles lead the Cornhuskers by a 7 to nothing score. This man is not a company president. He's not a vice president. They're waiting for you. While his face is well known to everyone from the security guard to the summer intern, his name doesn't appear on the company phone list. Yet he controls the productivity of this office down to the last sheet of paper. And we think that's a serious problem. Because business should depend on a copier that works, not a repairman. Rico, copiers built to work and work and work. They say a new roof is a big deal. Messy. Expensive. Dangerous. But Goodyear said, try and top this. And Goodyear developed a synthetic roofing that simply rolls on and seals tight with a hot air blower. It's fast, easy, and economical for schools, factories, and buildings anywhere. And it's waterproof, weatherproof. So let it rain. And remember, what they say doesn't always wash. Goodyear. What's this tough guy? After aftershave skin conditioner. I know. I thought I was the only guy with sensitive skin. Every time I shave, I get it right here. What do you fellas use? Because shaving irritates my whole face. After. Try it. Looks different. It's rich. It's a lotion. After soothes razor scrape sensitive skin. Hey, this feels great. And smells good, too. Terrific. Sensible care for sensitive skin. After aftershave skin conditioner. By me when you buy most home entertainment products... I think it's down here. Insert video output G into auxiliary 2. Either you pay an extra charge for installation, or you figure it out yourself.
But at Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Centers, we give you installation and instruction at no extra charge. You see, our terrific audio and video products aren't the only reasons it's worth coming to Curtis Mathis. Curtis Mathis, is it really worth it to go anywhere else? Marissa, I'll put C. As we begin the second quarter of play at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, the Cornhuskers have the football. Third down, a yard and a half. Florida State sets up a five-man defensive front. Third down and a yard and a half. And keeping it is Taylor. Flips it out now to Kelly and John Kelly. Hits the short for a first down out around the 37-yard line. That was a late pitch and could have gone awry, but it didn't. It worked for the first down. Let's go! Let's go! Nebraska seems to move the football, Tim, with some degree of success until they get about the 30-yard line or so of Florida State, and then it gets the door shuts on them. It has so far. They have one turnover in the game when it looked like they might be able to go ahead and score some points. On first down, the handoff goes to John Kelly, gets the block around the corner, penalty flag goes down as Kelly gets to about the 41. There is a penalty flag on the play. Martin Mayhew was over there and whacked him down. Paul Schmidt, the referee, will define the penalty for us. Flipping. Preliminary signal is You can see that clip coming from the outside band. It was a crackback block, pretty much, and he just hit low and behind the, the guy. Keith, you make an interesting point, but I've got that feeling, and maybe you do too, that when Nebraska scores, the floodgates will open. They had the ball nine minutes and 59 seconds of that first quarter. Well, we felt that last year in a 17-13 ball game, and that was the score at halftime and came out in the second half. And every against time, the offense, first down. Every time the Huskers got down in the neighborhood where they could do something, they'd make a mistake. And turned the ball over uh, four times, I guess it was. Florida State had six turnovers themselves last week. So far tonight, they've been clean on it. First down, the ball is up around the 23, and they've got to go out near the 47 to get their first down. Steve Taylor on a straight drop goes down the middle with it, and it is incomplete. Martin Mayhew, number 32, was covering Rod Smith on the play. Man-to-man -man coverage on that side. Now, guarantee I'd complain, too. I thought there was pass interference. Here's the bump now. You can't do that. And look at the left arm. That's the one that's critical. Incidental contact, both going for the ball. That's fair. Both players have a right to that football. But when you bring up that left arm, oh, look out. The flag should fly. And I thought he had a legitimate gripe there. No official response to it. It's second down and about 24. Ball is given off to the fullback, Micah Heibel, number 48. His uh, forward progress is going to be good for a yard or so out around the 24, where Fred Jones and Gerald Nichols gang up on him. Those guys are scary. I'll tell you what, Jones and McGowan get their ears laid back and get a crack to come at you. They will just take your head off. They know the difference between come here and sick them, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Where'd you learn that? You're from Maryland. You don't talk like that up there. <laughs> Third down and 24 now. Jones, 55, jumps into the crack. Now he drops off. Taylor goes back to throw. No pressure on him. The pass is away. The pass is in here. Almost intercepted. Mayhew, number 32, was the man that had the best chance to hold on to the ball. Eric Williams was the one who made the first contact. So the uh, quarterback, Williams, deflects it just enough. And Mayhew can't come down with it. So John Croker is in now to do the punting and hitting the football for the first time as a varsity player. John is a sophomore from Henderson, Nebraska, an outstanding high school player here in the state of Nebraska. Deion Sanders, the deep man, number two for Florida State. Kick is away, kind of slides off the side of his foot. Sanders feels it at the 43. And wiggles around for a while, finally knocked down at the 44. That's a 34-yard punt by Croker on his first varsity kick. We've got 13-34 to go in the first half, and Florida State leads Nebraska 7-0.
fire brewing. It's more than a way to make strohs and stroh light. It's a family tradition, passed down from one generation to another for over 200 years. It's what guarantees that smooth... Back for Nebraska, cousin of Irving Pryor, the All-American wide receiver here at Nebraska. Florida State has a new tailback now. Keith Ross is in there. He's a speedster, sophomore out of Newberry, 185-pounder. You give him a little daylight and see you later. Ball is just outside the 44 of the center. Williams remains the fullback. Well, that's a greeting for Keith Ross, isn't it? Ball was stuck in his tummy just about the time Chris Buckman arrived, and I'll guarantee you, Chris, uh, Keith wasn't going anywhere with Chris Buckman to hold of it. He's fun to watch. I'll tell you, he does everything fundamentally right. I mean, you're supposed to keep that low center of gravity, tuck that tail, and get across the line of scrimmage quickly. He does that, and then when he comes up to hit you, oh, I'm telling you, he puts a punch into it. Loss of two, back to the 42. Second down and 12 for the Seminoles. Look out for Pat Carter, the big tight end. Great athlete, hasn't seen the ball tonight. Might drag him down the middle. Back goes Chip Ferguson. They had him wide open. They throw instead to the fullback, Dane Williams, and Williams running for the marker. I think they mark him just short of it. And, Tim, they had Pat Carter wide open down the middle. That's a good call, and they've got to get to him. Let's go back up in the stands now and get a wide view of what it looks like from the seats, the cheap seats here at Nebraska. This is what it looks like here. And, of course, there's the play action, and Ferguson comes back. What they did is they cleared out that side, and he just slipped under the coverage. Just short of the first down. Third down and a half yard. I don't know if I'd want that seat or not. I'm not sure I would either. <laughs> I said the cheat sheet. Rollback <laughs> goes inside with it, trying for the first down. Dane Williams, a 225-pounder. And it just depends on whether it's a left foot or a right foot mark. And he's got the right foot down, and he may not have it. going to measure. Timeout for He's while they're measuring, you know that completion that they just had was in the zone area of Charles Pryor and playing in his first varsity game. He's playing with one sprained hand and one broken hand. He's short. Now, if he'd have marked that with his left foot, it's been a first down, but he didn't. So now it's Bobby Bowden's turn to make the decision. Go for it or what? Tom Osborne made it to go and got it, and Bobby Bowden is going to go for it. This is where Bobby gets foxy, too. You don't know what he's going to do in a situation like this. Well, he's loaded the field with tight ends. He's got three tight ends out there right now for blocking. Pitch it to Ross. Ross on a sweep, didn't make it. He did not make it. The entire defense just low to the left side. Broderick, Thomas, and Chris Buckman coming over there. Thomas, a sophomore. And Buckman, of course, the senior, and they buried the play. One of the big concerns that Florida State had in the offseason was rebuilding that offensive line. They lost Jamie Dukes. They lost John Iannata. You can see the difference here. Only two of nine Florida State runs have gone for plus yardage. Here again, great pursuit by the Nebraska defense. They come across, establish a new line of scrimmage, beat everybody on that line of scrimmage, make the contact and take them back. Oh my, that's a big play. Huskers ball at the road 47. America rides Monroe. America rides Monroe. On the road, the way to go. America rides Monroe. More people ride Monroe shocks and struts than any other brand. And right now, get up to $20 in reason. The Orangemen lead in the Carrier Dome, 17-14. Back to Keith Jackson. Here in Lincoln, Nebraska, it's a 7 nothing ball game. The Husker defense rose up and stopped the Seminoles on the fourth down try, get the ball back, first down at their own 47. Steve Taylor, outstanding as a starting quarterback in tonight's game. Six out of 33. Leading Florida State's total offense because the FSU total right now is only 31 yards. So Taylor will pull the trigger. Nebraska's loaded up on the right side, and he goes that way. And his pass zings 
incomplete as Vaughn Shepard, the junior out of St. Paul, Minnesota. The wingback fell down, and I think he had him if he had been able to keep his feet. Second down, 10. Taylor's passing is two out of five for 23 yards. But you saw earlier on the touchdown that was called back because of the penalty that he threw that ball about 35 yards, roped it on the run. So he is very strong. Second down and 10. All right. Right-handed ball club most of the time. They break the play and come to the left side. The wingback, when you see that wingback coming this way, uh, oftentimes uh, you could expect him to get it on a counter to the tight side, but that time Taylor kept the ball as Brinson was in motion and Gerald Nichols brought him down. The pickup on the play is about three yards. It'll be third down and seven. Florida State is just loading up now. They're putting everybody up in close because they've got that feeling they're going to run. Now, they've been playing a two-deep zone. The way to attack it is in the middle. There is daylight down the middle. No question about it. Taylor rolls it right. Pulls it down and takes off with it. Now he throws it incomplete just as he gets to the sideline. Flag on the far side of the field. Past the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. When he turned up field, the marker was right in front of him. But he was searching for somebody to throw the ball to and uh, didn't see the marker. And he took about a step and a half past the marker or past the line of scrimmage. He's an interesting talent, though, isn't he? Shattered all of the rushing records of Marcus Allen in San Diego's Lincoln High School. Also broke all the passing records of Marcus Allen's brother, Damon. We have an illegal forward pass against the offense beyond the neutral zone. Lost it down, fourth down. So on fourth down, John Croker is in for his second punt as a Cornhusker. His first one was 34 yards. Deion Sanders is back. He ran around for a while, but actually totaled only two yards on the punt return. But he's dangerous. Penalty flag goes as the punt is away, and it's a good one this time. Sanders back at 15. Gets away from a couple, but now he is dropped back around the 12-yard line. A 38-yard punt with pretty good hang time. That time, Rod Smith downfield to make the tackle. Let's see about the penalty. Offside, Florida State. It'll be the Seminoles' ball back around the 11-yard line. I would think Nebraska would decline that penalty because it's not really going to help them in uh, the area of possession, and they've got the Seminoles backed up well in their own territory. Let's go to Al Trotwig for this special story. You'll enjoy it. Keith, you know, when the silk turns brown, it's harvest time on the cornfields, and the men of Nebraska, the farmers, like Ed McKay, who's been a farmer for 70 years, are really what the horn hu corn huskers are all about. But speed on the field and here is very important. George, show us how you do it. Unbelievable. George, that was very quick. <laughs> but you know, these are tough times for farmers. George, how many bushels of corn are you trying to sell right now? Oh, I imagine in the United States, there are millions of bushels that we'd like to get rid of. We have a terrible surplus of all the grain. All right, George. Keith, back to you. That's the speedy Husker. Indeed he is. A little drop pass out in the flat is dropped by the fullback, Dane Williams, swinging it out there. He would have had six or seven yards had he been able to hang on to it. That, however, is not why Nebraska is called Cornhusker. Cornhusker was originally used by the University of Iowa, then they chose eventually Hawkeyes down there. And uh, there was a couple of sports editors in this area that liked the term Cornhusker, so they started calling Nebraska Cornhuskers, and it stuck. But I'll tell you one thing, ain't nobody quicker than that from what we just saw in getting the corn off the stalk. I like that. You're impressive. Fiction in fact from Keith Almanac. <laughs> On second down and 10, Kip Ferguson from the goal line throws the swing pass out. Loss on the play as Keith Ross brings it up to about the nine, and he was lucky to get that far. And the Nebraska defensive people now are really beginning to swarm. Well, Jeff Tomchak, the cornerback on that side, read the play immediately, came up, 
and really made a nice stick on the uh, the running back that time. Let me tell you, Jeff Tomjak's got to be a pretty good football player because he's starting ahead of Brian Washington, who started here at Nebraska as a freshman, and you can count on the fingers of one hand the number of freshmen who have started at Nebraska. He's also 6'1", 220 pounds. That's big for a cornerback. It's third down and 12 from the nine. Chip Ferguson hands the ball to Keith Ross. Ross isn't going anywhere. Huskers really punishing. They really jumped him that time, trying to knock him loose with the football, but couldn't do that. However, it brings up fourth down, and Lewis Berry is going to be punting out of his end zone. Tony Holloway gets the first hit on Keith Ross on that defensive play. Twenty-six and forty-four yards, the two punts tonight by Lewis Berry. Very average, better than 43 last year. They need a big one here. He gets some pressure, but he gets it out and puts it way up into the night sky, all the way back to the Nebraska 49. And Brinson is going to lose yardage as he retreats, trying to find some help. And Dana Brinson is brought down back around the 46. That was a 41-yard punt by Lewis Berry. So Lewis has done his job. His team leads 7-0. Stolen bases, pennant races, stand right up and cheer. Now you're talking baseball. Now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times. And Stroh's is spoken here. Stroh's, fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. Now you're talking Stroh's. Now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times. And Stroh's is spoken here. In January, Nissan introduced the hard-body trucks. In its first off-road race, the Mojave 250, a Nissan hard-body comes home a winner. In its first Baja, one of the world's toughest off-road events, another Nissan hard-body 4x4 takes first place. Nissan hard-bodies beat the desert. One tough machine for the street. You need a hard-body. The winner is hard-body. The name is Nissan. Baseball scores in the National League East. The Mets won to reduce the magic number to nine. Houston won to extend its lead to seven and a half games. Phillies trail L.A. Magic number goes down to eight if they lose. And Cincinnati trails Chicago. The lead is up to eight games for Houston if that holds. Boston beat Minnesota. Toronto beat Chicago in the American League East. The lead is five and a half. Boston over Toronto. Yankees in California get started later. Meanwhile, Kansas City and Texas are scoreless in the first. California leading Texas by six and a half games in the American League West. Back to Keith Jackson. A 7 nothing ball game at that time. 9.56 remaining in the first half. Seminole and uh, Nebraska now settling into a defensive struggle after Seminole took the opening kickoff and put it in the end zone. It's Keith Jones and Ken Kalen in the I formation behind Steve Taylor for the Huskers. Looks to throw it. Gets it off to the sideline. Rob Schnitzler is over there, caught it out of bounds. Is that Schnitzler or, or, or is it? Yes, it is. And Deion Sanders is with him, but he went high in the air for the ball and came down out of bounds. Let's see if we can see his feet now. Again, they go to the corner rather than going down the middle. I'd like to see him sneak somebody down there. But here again, he takes that little roll to the left and puts the ball right on the money. Now, here he comes. You only need one foot in. There it is. Didn't have control. Did not have control was the key to the play is right. Willie Griffin comes in at tight end now for Nebraska. They go to a double tight end alignment at 9.50 to play in the first half and serving 7 to nothing on second down and 10. Power high formation. Taylor drops back to throw the ball. Going down the middle with it. He's got a man over and that is over and through. Todd Milliken the tight end. He was two strides in front and home free and the ball was just a little bit long. They can do that all night long, I'm telling you. Florida State is playing a lot of two deep zones. There's two men back there, and you can take a guy and sneak him down the middle, and until they make a correction or change their defense, that play will be open. Let me ask you this question now. Taylor threw the ball to a tight end, big man. Obviously not as fast as the wide receivers. Most of the deep passing practice probably is done to wide receivers. Faster people. Call the play, now I'll... I'll <laughs> disagree with you in a second. Third down and ten. Taylor again sets up, gets pressure, runs out of it. Got a lot of daylight. 
Deion Sanders gets him at the 20 yard line. 34 yard run. Here's the ground level look at what we just saw. Again, he's got a man open, but he sees the pressure coming from both sides. Steps up into the pocket. Now, this is where his speed comes in. Told he broke all of Marcus Allen's running records in high school. Good juke, great speed, got to the corner. Now, that's a pretty interesting read for a young sophomore. He read it quickly, felt the pressure, and got out of there. First down, Nebraska, just short of the Florida State 20. The ball is kept by the quarterback, Taylor. He breaks the loose. He scores. In for the extra point, Dale Klein. Out of Blakeman's hole. It is up. And it is good. The coaches say that this kid idolized Turner Gill. That's why he came to Nebraska. Turner Gill being one of the greatest quarterbacks here in Cornhusker history. But this one, I think, is going to be a tremendous quarterback. They say a player's greatness is determined by a long period of success. This is the beginning of the journey. We'll be back. State Farm is there when women need life insurance. Whether she brings home a paycheck or works full-time at home, nobody does more for a family than a mother does. That's why so many women talk to State Farm agents about life insurance. We listen. And we help make sure that everything a woman wants to do for her kids gets done. I know how she feels. I have a family, too. Just like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. If only things lasted longer. If only their warranties lasted longer. If only you had bought them with the American Express card. Because from now until December 31st, we will extend the free repair period of the manufacturer's warranty. In fact, we'll double it up to an extra year. American Express introduces buyer's assurance. Now, if something breaks, it won't break you. But only if you use the American Express card. Apply now. Lou Holtz makes his debut as coach of Notre Dame. Michigan's Jim Harbaugh plans a Big Ten welcome. CFA football continues next Saturday on ABC Sports. Young Mr. Taylor's having quite a night, isn't he? We're all even at 7-7 with 9-11 to play in the first half. Klein will kick off, and the deep people for Florida State will be Keith Ross and Darren Holloman. Now, Nebraska's defense has been dominating Florida State in the last two possessions. Let's see what the Seminoles can do. First off, they need some field position. And then we'll see what happens from there. Kicking off from the 35-yard line, college football this year. And that's the rules change, the most obvious one. And Darren Holloman skitters and slides his way back out near the 28-yard line. And they do have reasonably good field position now as they go to work. The numbers there on the Nebraska scoring drive. I think that's a good rule, too, kicking off from the 35, Keith, because they said they were having less than half the kickoff return when they moved the football up, so they moved it back a little bit, and we're seeing more returns. It's exciting. I think it's one of the most exciting parts of the game, although I didn't like being on the kickoff team. <laughs> Sammy Smith is in for the first time tonight at tailback for Florida State. 220-pounder. Holloman's in it fullback. Jim Ferguson slips a little as he sets the pass, but delivers it, and it's complete. The Pat Carter is tied in. Boy, I used to hate that play when I was playing on the outside. They brought him from the right side and just dragged him across the middle all the way to the opposite side, underneath all the coverage. Now, this guy, he's 251 pounds. Look at him. And when the Pro Scouts evaluated all the college talent last year in the country, they ranked him as the number two tight end in the nation. Number one, Check. Oklahoma, second down and about two. Ferguson gives to Sammy Smith, and Smith will have the first down. 
Smith, who has had a history of injuries since he arrived on campus, had a pretty good ball game a year ago here in the opener against uh, Nebraska. Played quite well, but then he got a stress fracture and was lost for the season. And he's had the flu, he's had this, he's had that, and he has not yet really sound. But they do have a first down at their own 34-yard line. Movement in the backfield for Florida State. Chip Ferguson breaks out of the pack and runs for about seven or eight yards, but I think you're going to get a penalty call here against Florida State. It is against the Seminoles, and while they mark off the penalty, let's talk about next Saturday. We'll be in South Bend, Indiana, one of the legendary places in all of college football, as the Michigan Wolverines move in. Michigan, the choice of some people to win the national championship this year. Against the offense, first down. It is also the debut of Lou Holtz as the head man of the Fighting Irish. And we'll be there next Saturday for you at 3 Eastern time. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame hosting Mighty Wolverines of Michigan. First down and 15 from the 34. As they're up, uh, well, lose the five yards from the 39, and Ferguson shoots it down the middle. And Herb Gaynor had his hands on it, but Charles Fryer had his hands on Gaynor, and uh, it was close to being too soon. Jerry Faust in his uh, opening game as the head man of the Akron Zippers. And he's leading Salem uh, 21 to nothing. We wish him well, too. He's indeed. Awfully, nice awfully nice man. Awfully nice man. Nice man. 34 yard line. Second down and 10 for the Seminoles. Second down and 15 for the Seminoles. Quick pop goes to Tanner Holloman, the fullback. 205 pounder David Palmer and Dane Williams uh, play that position as well and they are 225 but they were trying to pop Holloman the quicker man over the left side and he didn't get a whole lot out of it Nebraska is controlling the line of scrimmage right now that's been the difference and the linebackers are filling the pursuit lanes as quickly as any linebackers we've seen and this little number 10 out on the right corner for Nebraska the cornerback Charles Fryer is an impressive young athlete he comes up quickly he's playing with a sprained hand a broken hand and yet he's staying right in the hip pocket of receiver and filling the outside quickly. Florida State running game hasn't produced a whole lot so far tonight Ferguson wings one and it is almost intercepted are they going to yes they call it an interception by Brian Davis a one-hander and there's a penalty flag on the far side of the field a spectacular play by Brian Davis but let's see about that yellow flag Brian Davis isn't that big but I'll tell you what this looks like a bear ball to scoop this up here's the shortstop comes in and just nails it one-handed and pulls it in and hit the ground that's not an interception They certainly called it one, and they've come up and marked the ball at the 43. It was offside Nebraska. Yeah, but watch, it goes right through the Going to wipe it out. they have offside against the defense. Still third down. Yeah. Well, they had that ball marked up on the 43 and pointing the other way. I know they did. They got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, uh, the penalty wipes out. What had been apparently an errant call, at least in the angle we could see, and Florida State return, retains the ball just over the 40, where it's third down and call it nine. Chip Ferguson back. Heats off. Down he goes. Danny Noonan, 6'4", 280 pounds, and he is mobile and oftentimes hostile. Mobile, hostile, and agile. Watch this now. You talk about dominating the line of scrimmage. He's off at the snap of that ball and has already established a new line of scrimmage five yards back in Florida State's defense. Double team. And he still slides off that, comes back in pursuit, and takes Ferguson down. Boy, that's a play. That's a football play. It really is. Hey, he's not a youngster. He's a full-grown man. Ball is dropped by Lewis Perry and a bad kick. He gets some height on it, however, and now the ball takes a Nebraska bounce and comes rolling back up the field. 
And it'll be put down at the 39-yard line, a 24-yard punt by Lewis Berry, one of the best punters in the country, but he's having a bit of a hard time tonight because I'm sure of the cold and the rain. He averaged better than 43 last season. He had 144 tonight, 141, but the other two have been in the 20s. Of course, I tell you, when you've dropped the ball, you're searching around the ball, and you've got three tons of beef, the rest of beef coming at you. <laughs> it tends to cause a little anxiety. 6-13 to play in the first half. Huskers have it, and Steve Taylor goes down the line with it. Keeps it. And moves it up to the 44 for five yards. Cut down by Deion Sanders. Remember that name. Deion Sanders, six feet, 180, a sophomore out of Fort Myers. You'll hear that a lot in years to come, I expect. I'll tell you what kind of athlete Deion Sanders is. You've seen him here on the football field perform extremely well. He also is a 1985 fifth-round draft pick of the Kansas City Royals. Baseball. Second down, five. Seven-seven ball game. Pitch to Keith Jones. Daylight on the right side. First down at midfield. Running on that right side behind John McCormick, Tom Wilder, Mark Cooper, the center, Stan Parker's on the left side with Rob Maggard. Reading from left to right along the line, Nebraska goes 265, 270, 250, 265, and Mr. Wilder is 280. We told you that Steve Taylor broke all of Marcus Allen's rushing records in high school. Keith Jones has 4-3-3 speed, fastest Husker in the history of football at this school, and he broke all of Gale Sayers records in high school. Well, that's not going bear hunting with a stick. That's coming loaded. Midfield first down, Husker. Taylor gives it to Jones. Some thunder and lightning along that right side that time as Paul McGowan, that big linebacker, came through the crack. And you could hear it over in the next county when they collided. Gain of a yard and a ball on that play. Dana Brinson comes in. Looks like the wingbacks are the messengers tonight for Tom Osborne. Brinson comes wide to the bottom of your picture. Jason gambles up the top. Taylor spins around, wings it out to Brinson. He's out there by himself, and a lot of white shirts chasing him, and they bring him down at the 40. Martin Mayhew got to him first. Number 32, a junior from Tallahassee. Just short of the 40 and just short of the first down. Third down one. That's a bold thing. They put, there were four white shirts out there and they threw to Brinson who was all by himself. I'm not sure that Dana wouldn't like to have stopped and yelled for help. It's a pretty safe play though. I don't care what defense you're in. He takes a three-step drop, unloads it quickly and uh, it's a very short pass. It's third down and about a foot. And Taylor, the quarterback, keeps it over the right side, and he'll have the first down. Mark Cooper, the center, the pivot man on that play, 6'2", 250, and another in the long line of great centers from Nebraska. Virginia Tech, 7 over Cincinnati. And look at this. Hello, Southwest Louisiana, 10-0 over Oklahoma State. Everybody will be getting to it next weekend, and we'll be at South Bend for Michigan and Notre Dame. And it is the first down by the length of the football. Number 88 comes in at a wide receiver spot for Nebraska, Rod Smith, and Vaughn Shepard returns at wingback. And the Huskers have it first down at the Florida State 39, 3.50 to go first half, 7-7 seven, seven ball game. A good one. Keith Jones goes in motion. Now he comes back the other way. <laughs> what, is, what, what is he doing? Warming up, I guess. Ball goes to Jones over the right side. He picks up about three yards. <laughs> Warming up. Hey, that may be true. He's the uh, big eight 60-yard dash champion <laughs> in track. Maybe he needs to warm up to get going. Gamer on the tackle. Him him three yards, second down and seven. It's fun to watch all these guys with speed. <laughs> Something I never had. They used to time me with a sundial. Penn State winning big tonight. From the 37 of Florida State. Ridden off to the fullback. Caleb is rolled up at the line of scrimmage, and it's Gerald Nichols again, big number 79. 
the senior from St. Louis. Keith, you've covered Florida State for many years, and when you look back not too long ago, Florida State was one of those teams that always struggled in defense, used to give up a lot of points. When they'd win, they'd win 42-40, or when they'd lose, it'd be by giving up quite a few points. But uh, they've really turned things around, and they've established a pretty good defense. Well, back in Bill Peterson's day, uh, they used to score a lot of points. Jim Hammond and those guys, they really roll them up. You got a reverse. And trapped is Vaughn Shepard behind the line of scrimmage, and a penalty flag goes down. Back at the 45, as Shepard goes down, Thomas Harp, the nose guard, had come out of there and come across and grabbed him, and I think Thomas got the face mask. I'm guessing. I don't know for sure. Well, Chuck. Still have those good eyes. Play just took too long to develop. They brought it back on the other side all the way around, and here's the face mask. There's no question about that. Now, was it flagrant or not? Is it 5 or 15? They're going to go all the way down 15. to 15 with it. Yes, sir. Well, you know why? Because he had his arm fully extended, and he came whipping it across. Yard, face mask against the defense. Push head. Almost ripped his head off. So a big penalty against the Seminoles, just inside their 22, with two minutes and 10 seconds to go in this first half. Nebraska now trying to untie it. Steve Taylor gives the wing back, the old wing back counter coming this way, and Brinson is dropped short of the line of scrimmage. That's a good defensive play, and number 38, Paul McGowan, was right there to make it. Nebraska ran that play effectively against Florida State last year, and it looks like Bobby has them really geared up and, and ready, looking for anything coming back on a, uh, a counter, a trap, anything of that magnitude. Nebraska's run that play against the world successfully. For years. That's I mean, right. this is the team that's led the nation in rushing four out of the last five years. Right. Second down and 12. The ball is back here, the 24. Steve Taylor coming around, turns the corner, and butts heads in there at the line of scrimmage, and down he will go. He was butting heads with Fred Jones, and I'll guarantee you that Steve Taylor, even at 195 pounds, is going to lose that head button contest because Jones weighs 240 pounds and he is dead strong at that inside line backing position. Timeout, Nebraska. 116 to go first half. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol. The only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castro before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castro, engineered for today's smaller cars. Who says you can't have old world taste and a new world waste? Old world aging and the new world's youthful spirit. Europe's finest hops in America's finest light beer. Michelob Light, old world quality from Anheuser-Busch. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can have it all. The unblemished career of Mike Tyson and his meteoric rise continued tonight. He technically knocked out Alonzo Ratliff in the second round of their heavyweight bout, meaning that Tyson now will go on, if everything goes as scheduled, to meet Trevor Burbick for the WBC Heavyweight Championship in November. A victory there would make him the youngest man ever to win a heavyweight boxing championship. Still unbeaten, Mike Tyson, another TKO. Keith? Well, these uh, two heavyweights we got here in Lincoln, Nebraska tonight are getting it on pretty well. The Huskers trying to untie this thing now. The ball is just inside the Florida State 23. Seminoles uh, got hit with a 15-yard personal foul as a result of the face mask ball. And you've got 1.16 to go in the first half. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. The Huskers have two timeouts remaining. Florida State with three. Right now, the Seminoles are most concerned with Nebraska's possession of the ball. It is third down and 12. Taylor in passing is three out of eight for 32 yards. His running has been the big weapon tonight. 
for the Cornhuskers. Quick trap in the middle. Goes Ken Kalen. Bucks his way down to about the 16-yard line. That'll leave him four yards short of the first down. In comes the kicking team. That's all right. They were in the four-down area, but they didn't want to take a chance in turning the ball over. It's the first game. Safe play. Good quick trap inside. Didn't get the first down, but it sets up the field goal. It'll be 33 yards. He was short at 49. Blakeman gets it down. Klein hits it. Crowd says it's good, and so do the men in the striped shirt. And Nebraska goes for the lead at 51 to go in the first half, 10 to 7. And now let's have a look at the respective campuses. Faculty members at Florida State University have been recognized with such honors as the Nobel, the Pulitzer, and membership in the National Academy of Sciences. Known nationally and internationally for research, service, and publishing, FSU faculty exert their greatest impact teaching the university's 22,500 students. Thanks to this educational foundation, Florida State graduates excel in virtually every walk of life. An example of quality making a difference. The faculty of Florida State University. Financial know-how. You don't get ahead in today's world without it. And what better way to learn about investment in the real world than to use real money? It's happening at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Students are outperforming the Wall Street Wizards. There are risks and rewards, but this is learning for the real world. The University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Learning that makes a difference. Florida State, three timeouts to work with now, but not much time remaining. 51 seconds, Klein kicks off. It's Keith Ross at the 9, the 20, and down at the 27, and penalty flags are flying, and we might have another face mask, the way he went down. Keith, you mentioned the time. There's 46 seconds left. They start with pretty good field position. If it is a face mask, it'll even move it farther up the field. Watch for Ferguson to put four receivers now into the offense. They'll go to that, that hurry-up offense. Here's the play again. Let's look for that face mask. There it is right there. And again, the arm is extended. The head is whipped. Should be 15, and it is. 15-yard face mask against the kicking team. First down. So now with 46 seconds, three timeouts. The ball is resting at the 43-yard line. Dante Wiley got the call on that the base pass, so let's see what Chip Ferguson can do. 10-7, Nebraska leads, ball goes to Sammy Smith, Smith still got it, look out! Great speed, gets a block, one man, touchdown, great run by Sammy Smith. Herb Gaynor, the little wide receiver, not the little, uh, the wide receiver split in, knocked him loose, from the final man, and Sammy Smith goes 57 yards. Smart play by Gaynor. Didn't put a hard block on him, just cut him off. Now watch. Bobby Bowden wanted one of his tailbacks really to stand out. He hasn't had that. He's had to play a lot of people. This is one of the most heavily recruited backs in the history of Florida State. He runs straight up and down. He runs like Herschel Walker. He's got great speed, great vision. You see his cuts here. Once he's into the secondary, people don't have a prayer to cut him off. He got that final block from from Gaynor, all Gaynor did was get in the way of the defensive back, and Smith took it the rest of the way. And Smith hits the extra point. He's 91 for 91, and in 14 seconds, Florida State goes bouncing back to the lead, 14 to 10. That's good clock utilization there. One play, this is 57 yards, 14 seconds. That run was not without some contact because there were three people that got their hands on him, I believe. Another look at it. It's worth seeing again. Well, by the 15-yard penalty allowed Florida State to really have more availability to go to a play like this once they were up near your midfield. Fake the reverse, and once again, with that kind of speed and that size, once Smith is into the secondary, it's Katie bar the door. That block by Herb Gaynor, though, probably was the one. I thought that Nebraska man had a pretty good shot at getting him, and he just shook off number 10, uh, Charles Pryor, down near the goal line to take it on in. So Sammy Smith 
219 pound speedster as made by the happy for the moment. You know, Sammy said he was a little bit rusty last week in the uh, first game. You mentioned all the difficulty he had had with the rib problems, being banged up, and then having the flu and sitting out. He was redshirted last year, although he played against Nebraska and gained 70 yards, and was very impressive, but then he was injured, and they sat him out for the rest of the year. So some of that rust now is getting knocked off the shingles, and here he comes. He's out and back in the ball game, and he looks pretty sharp. Florida State kicking off now. Schmidt will kick it. Terry Rogers, freshman, son of Johnny Rogers, Heisman Trophy winner at Nebraska, back on the goal line along with Vaughn Shepard. Very short kickoff. Bounces is so short. Bounces over the head of Vaughn Shepard, and he has to pursue it all the way through the end zone because he had touched it. So that'll come out to the 20 with an even 30 seconds to go in the first half. Now in the past, Nebraska has not had a very good hurry up offense because they didn't throw the ball effectively. They only completed 55 passes last year. Catherine Clayton completed only 35%. It's not that they didn't throw that much. It's just that they didn't effectively execute. John Kelly, the eye back. Mike Heibel is the fullback. Taylor is the quarterback. Taylor gives it off to John Kelly, and Kelly runs into Fred Jones, and down he goes after one yard. Ten seconds left here. Florida State now. They want him to get off the play, but you want to loosen up in case they do try to go deep on you. They won't get it off. I don't, I'm not sure they really want to. They'll go to the clubhouse in this posture. Your halftime score, the Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Florida State Seminoles. Seminoles with a 57-yard run by Sammy Smith. Take the halftime lead, 14 to 10. Leave it to the good hands, people. There's much emphasis on youth these days. It's great that all state appreciates the wisdom and dignity of us mature folks. We can save 10% on all state homeowners. Seminoles lead 14 to 10. Keith Jackson, Tim Brandt, Al Trotwick, and we are waiting for Derek Schmidt to kick it off. The deep people are Terry Rogers and Ron Shepard, and it's a short kick again. Shepard comes up, lets it bounce, hits in a puddle of water, doesn't go anywhere, picks it up, wiggles his way up the sidelines, and goes out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. The tackle by... Thank you. Keep the difference in the first half was Nebraska State homeowner. Seminoles lead 14 to 10. Keith Jackson, Tim Brandt, Al Trotwick, and we are waiting for Derek Schmidt to kick it off. The deep people are Terry Rogers and Ron Shepard, and it's a short kick again. Shepard comes up, lets it bounce, hits in a puddle of water, doesn't go anywhere, picks it up, wiggles its way up the sidelines, and goes out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. The tackle by Mayhew. Keep the difference in the first half was Nebraska's inability to stop the big play. Of Florida State's 177 total yards, 120 of those came on three plays. They only had, what, 26 plays in the first half? Well, uh, Florida State, on the other hand, made Nebraska work hard for everything it got. Nebraska's time of possession was almost 20 minutes. Yep. Keith Jones and Ken Kalen open at the... Full back and eye back positions. Jones, the eye back, has the ball, wedges over the right side, and gets out to about the 26, close to the 27. First quarter stats changing now to second uh, quarter or, or halftime stats. See, look at that. Look at that time of possession down the bottom there for Nebraska, and they only got 10 points out of it. But out of the 177 total yards, as we said, 120 of those on just three plays. From the 27, it's second down and seven for the Cornhuskers. Steve Taylor, who's had a big night at quarterback, lobs the pass out to Dana Brinson, and Brinson is buried by number 37, Stanley Scheiber, the sophomore out of Tifton, Georgia. I think Brian Bosworth started a trend. I hope or, he's or, not going the same place I am for supper. <laughs> or Jim McMahon, whoever started this stuff. Third down and four and a half. 
for Nebraska. Could be a pretty good sized play right here. The Huskers are need a little momentum to get something going here. Brett Jones jumps up into the middle of the gap, now drops out. Taylor takes the ball to Jones, keeps it, throws down field, passes incomplete, and Nebraska will have to go to the punt. Todd Milliken, the tight end, again defending was the strong safety, Stanley Scheiber. And the reason he's a strong safety is he's absolutely fearless. And he is a real hitter. Deion Sanders drops back to field the punt now as John Croker comes in to punt for the third time. 34 and 38 is two previous kicks. Just beginning the second half of play. A little pressure on him this time, but gets a good kick out of there. Sanders indicates fair catch and then runs past the ball as it, it moves away to his left. And he couldn't accept it very well without risking a fumble. Only 32 yards on the high-hanging punt. Here again, Al. Keith, every week I'm going to try and find in whatever stadium we are in the best seat in the house. This week it belongs in section 127, row 1, seat 1, to Irene Provo, who hasn't missed a game in 35 years. Irene, you realize this is the best seat in the house. I've always said that, that it really is. How does it feel to see a night game here at Memorial Stadium? It's fun. It's different. All right, Keith, if you don't mind, I'm going to stay here and watch the game for a while. I don't blame you. Penalty flags are down. A little short lob thrown out by Chip Ferguson to Sammy Smith. And Smith is shaken off tacklers and finally taken out of bounds on the Nebraska 43. But let us see about the penalty flag. This being the first night game, we have had games finish under the lights here at Memorial Stadium, but this is the first one that ever started under them. It's against Florida State. The big game is wiped out. I want to know what happened to the person that was in that seat that Trotwig took. He was in the aisle. <laughs> that means Al's not going to sit there for long. No, not on a wet night. Penalties in the ball game. You can see the Seminoles have been flagged four times, Nebraska five times. Football comes Motion back against the offense. First day to the 33. Referee Paul Schmidt defining the penalty for you. Time remaining third quarter, 13-20. Seminoles leading 14-10. Keith, we ought to make note also that last week in its opening game, Florida State turned the ball over six times. In this game, Florida State has yet to suffer a turnover. And it's starting to rain again. First down and 15. Ferguson hands the ball to Sammy Smith. And he'll have about a yard, maybe. I don't think he even got a yard in the uh, way he was racked up. He might not have made it back to the line of scrimmage. Brad Tyler, defensive end on the left side, Kansas City, Missouri, really belted it, number 83. He did not get to the line. Second down and close to 18 now. 17, second down, 17. Number 95, Danny Noonan, apparently trying to anticipate, and he obviously showed what he had in mind, that is to slip off of the shoulder of the guard and penetrate, and he gets dinged for a five-yard uh, offside penalty, so that'll make it second down and about 12. You know, a lot of these players say that Brad Tyre is an inspiration to them because of the problems that he's had. Making contact, offside. He speaks openly of the tragedy in his family, his dad, in a, uh, I guess in a, a strange way, had lost or had not become himself, shot his mother, then took his own life, and Brad now talks of it openly and says that it motivates him. And he has graduated already, Keith, from the University of Nebraska in four years and now is a grad student and continues to use that motivation, wants desperately to make something of his life, wants desperately to help others, and continues to work uh, as an inspirational force on this Nebraska football team. Sammy's run takes him up to the 39-yard line where Parsons and Fryer made the stop on him. Number 82 checks in. That's Randy White, a junior from Mariana, Florida. He comes in at the split-in position, replacing Herb Gaynor. Herb hobbling a little bit right now. Apparently took a whack to the leg. Third down and nine now for Florida State as Chip Ferguson gets his pass away. It might be intercepted. Nope. Brian Davis was the man who had a shot at it, but Brian couldn't get his legs under him to make the jump for the ball and ran a little too far. The pass was intended for Randy White. But I might also point out that Chip Ferguson threw the ball under some pressure. I think Brian Davis is the premier defensive back in the country. He's got 
sub 4 4 speed. He's got great agility. That time he knocked it down. I think he misjudged it a little bit. He could have had yeah. an interception. Might have. Putting is tricky, though. As light rain is falling again. Lewis Berry for the punt. That's more like it for Berry. That looks like Lewis Berry. That is a howitzer fielded back on the 10 yard line by Dana Brinson, but he's off to the races. Fumbles the ball. Florida State recovers at the Nebraska 35. A 51 yard punt. A big return set up by Dana Brinson. He's hit. He coughs it up. And Brian Davis for Florida State. They've got a Brian Davis, too, and he is on that loose football. You can't win a football game, or at least you have a tough time winning it if you Nebraska put the ball on the ground. Now, Nebraska won nine games in a row last year after its opening loss to Florida State. But in that loss, they put the ball, or they turned the ball over four times last year. Here it is again. It's the second time tonight. They put it on the ground. Florida State in scoring position now. The snap is just inside the Nebraska 35-yard line. And Chip Ferguson handing the ball off is clobbered by Charles Fryer, the right cornerback, but he had already given it away to Dane Williams, the fullback. And he just was bumping his head against the rock wall. He didn't go anywhere. Big night for Brian. It'll be second down and ten. Darren Holloman, the little speedster, comes to the bottom of the picture. Fake to Sammy Smith. Jeff Ferguson keeps it. And he's thrown out of bounds by Tony Holloway. The defensive end stayed at home and knocked him out of bounds at the 30. So he got a little more than four yards on the carry. And so they flip the marker to third down and just over five. 14 to 10, the Seminoles have the lead over the Cornhuskers. Randy White, top of the picture. Holloman, bottom of the picture on third down and a long five. Ferguson looks to throw. Goes down the middle, Pat Carter. Carter fighting to get to the marker, and I think he might have made it. It'll be close. Oh, Again, I don't know. It's a left foot, right foot mark. That's exactly right. To use the right foot, it's going to be awfully close. It was a great call by Bobby Bowden in Florida State. Third down and five, was it? That's a good time five to blitz. Five plus. Good time to blitz. And North Nebraska did bring the man, the linebackers, to blitz, put pressure, and get us in the face of Ferguson as quickly as they could. They did, but it was a quick drop pass to the tight end underneath. They didn't give it to him. It'll be fourth and short, and they're going for it. Fourth and about a foot. He's got to get just over the 25 line. Ferguson, the quarterback, and he didn't have possession of the ball. The offensive front was moving, moving too soon, I think, and that thought of volley of penalty flags. And we might be looking at Derek Smith here in a moment. Did you see that helmet come flying out of there without a body in it? Yeah, I did. That's scary. <laughs> There's a dead ball, a legal procedure, false start. Well, here comes Schmidt. There's your movement right there. Three of them going too soon. Derek Schmidt brings the kick and tee onto the field now. And they put the tee down at the 37. It'll be a 47-yarder. His longest is 54. So this is within his range. Kick is away. Good. 47-yard field goal. The ball hung on and went just inside the right upright. And it's 17 to 10 now, Florida State. Every Monday through Friday, Mike Horner drives his Chevy S10 4x4 to game against New Mexico at home. The key play here, a touchdown interception return for Charles Davis at a point when New Mexico was driving for a touchdown that might have tied it at 21-21. That made it 28-14. Another touchdown has opened the margin wider, and now Tennessee appears to be home free. Back to Keith Jackson. Rain is pelting down again on the crowd of 75,865 at Memorial Stadium, University of Nebraska. Their 144th consecutive sellout. Their football team, however, is trailing 17 to 10 to Florida State. The Seminoles will kick off now with Terry Rogers and Vaughn Shepard deep. 
Two turnovers by Nebraska, and Florida State just cashed the last one in for a three-pointer. That is Shepard back at the three. Gets a crack. And brings the ball out to the 37. You know what? If he goes left instead of right, he's still running. You're exactly right, but oh, it's it much easier to see that up here than it is down there. Here he comes now. You watch. Everybody has a job right here. Everybody wants to take somebody in a, in a lane because they know the kickoff team comes down in specific lanes. Here's the opening now. He cuts to his right. If he goes to his left here, it's wide open over by the 40-yard marker. He cut back inside. That's where the pursuit was. But good field position just outside the 37 with Keith Jones and Ken Kalen in there. And Jones to the 40 and stops there. Fred Jones brings down Keith Jones. Time running along at 9.50 to go in the third quarter. It has been a bruiser of a football game. It really has. There have been some licks laid on folks. Wake Forest won their opener 21 to 13. Demon Deacon. Ole Miss winning tonight. And Mississippi State nailed down Syracuse are leading them 24 to 17. As Nebraska looks now at second down and seven from the 40. Steve Taylor down the line on the option outside. It goes to Jones. Gets a block from the lead man. The fullback gets the first down as he turns the corner at the 49-yard line. Run out by Stanley Scheiber. Pat Carter getting retaped. Apparently sprained an ankle. We have not seen Victor Floyd either since that opening drive at tailback for Florida State. First Sammy Smith turned in that 57-yarder. It figures he's going to get the ball to go into the second half, doesn't it? Keith Florida or Nebraska has to take some solace in the fact that it has moved the ball effectively. It has been their own mistakes that have stopped. Absolutely. First down, Cornhuskers, they're 49. Carter to Jones. Oh, look at him weave his way through there, and he's got another first down. Just inside the Florida State 40. And there was some authority in the blocking on the right side that time. Keith Jones is young. He's a very, very talented tailback. We mentioned that he is the fastest Husker ever with 4-3 speed. But he is also a little bit rusty. You know, he didn't play in the spring. He was hurt, sat out, had orthoscopic surgery on his knee, has rehabilitated that. So it may take him a little while to get back in the groove. Looks like he's getting there now. Brinson goes in motion for Nebraska. Taylor coming on the option, keeps it. And runs Ball into Deion Sanders Taylor. and Gerald Nichols. And he will have a two-yard pickup. Cincinnati with a victory Ball over Virginia Tech, 24-20. And there is a stunning score. Southwest Louisiana leading Oklahoma State by 10 points. Second down and eight for Nebraska. John Kelly is now at the eye back with Kalen staying at fullback. Taylor back to throw. Little flip out here to Kelly. Has a man in front of him. Puts his helmet down and goes straight ahead trying to get all he can get out of it. Stan Parker, the left guard, had drifted out to the left side to be the lone blocker in front of uh, John Kelly. And the Seminoles just simply outnumbered him on that side, and they come up a couple of yards short of the first down. Taylor makes this thing work. See, he comes back, feels the pressure, and got it out there in a hurry rather than worrying about trying to set it up nicely and, and be deceptive back there. He just got it out to Kelly as fast as he could, and it worked. Kelly had that blocker you talked about, and he made it pay. Third down and two. a major league hit right there folks i want to tell you that's a major league hit division 1a paul mcgowan 38 linebacker paul mcgowan made nine solo tackles in the first half look at him no stutter steps comes to the ball immediately that's reaction time and tucks the tail skies the eyes and drive right under the chin of the ball carrier well that's a rydell under a chin that can put a little ache and pain on your face a loss of a yard it's fourth down and three and nebraska's going at the Florida State 33. Seminoles are all punched right in tight. Keith Jones is back. Taylor's got the ball, gets around the corner. And almost broken. He's got the first down at the 21. Fred Jones shoved him out of bounds. 
Florida State was all bunched up, expecting power up the middle or maybe a play to the open side. Instead, he came back the other way. Taylor comes out of there now on that reverse pivot. After the fake, look at him. He's looking right at the outside man. Once that outside linebacker commits himself to the pitch man, he just takes off. That's a good read by the quarterback. 15 carries, 111 yards for Taylor. First down at the Florida State 21. Ball goes to Steve Jones. Steps over the line of scrimmage and goes to the 15. That is a high step. They say he has a vertical leap of 37 inches. He just used it. They've marked him just inside uh, the 16-yard uh, line. Renson comes back. Willie Griffin comes in at tight end. Jerry Faust on his opener at Akron. 35 to nothing. It is second down at about five. Taylor flips it back to Jones, and Jones is chewed up by number 37, Stanley Shiver, for a loss back to the 19. It's a good adjustment by Florida State. That play has been hurting them. It's just same play, different formation. This time, they brought everybody in in a power formation with two tight ends. They had a power eye, made it look like a little trap play, but came down on the same read. Now, the defense has, everybody has an assignment there. That defensive guard or the middle man has to take the, the dive man. Then the defensive tackle takes the quarterback, and the outside man takes the pitch man. Right now, Taylor's looking at third down and eight. Back to throw. Bobs it away, and the pass is incomplete, and you get a flag on it. Pass thrown toward Rod Smith. Eric Williams defending on it. And Taylor didn't have much zip on it. He was beginning to lose control of it. And for a moment, I thought he wanted to run it, but then he lobbed it, and he's got a flag. I'm not so sure they thought the pass was going to come wobbling in like that. See, if I'm not mistaken, Taylor was hit as he released the ball, and it was a slowly developing pass. Watch this. There's the hit. Now the ball just kind of wobbles. Contact is made right there before, just an instant before the ball hits, and I think it's a good call. That's a pretty close call. It is an extremely close call, but watch it here. See, the ball's not coming in quickly. Here comes the defensive back. There's the bump right yeah. there, yeah, and there's right. the ball. It is a good call. Pass on the first against the defense. Stop down. First step. If it had been more than 15 yards, it would have been a 15-yard penalty, but it was less than 15 yards, and so it goes down at that point where it is first down and goal for Nebraska at the Florida State 6. So the Seminoles mistake now. And Nebraska's knocking on the front door. Taylor down the line on the option. Keeps it. Touchdown. Back in the old days, Nebraska would load up and the rules of the game would change. It'd be straight ahead, no fair dodging. But you've got a new dimension in the offense now, Steve Taylor. And I'm telling you, he reads well. He's got great reflexes and instincts. And Paul McGowan ran himself out of play and missed the tackle. Kick is up. And the kick is good. And we're all even again. 17-17. Let's take another look at the play. This time, let's watch the linebacker, Paul McGowan, 38. All right, now he comes up toward the ball. Now he skates and slides down there. Let's see if he can make that tackle. No, he's got the opportunity to make it, but he's out of control. The weight takes him past the ball carrier. He slides off rather than trying to gain control and dropping that tail and getting that leverage, and it's a touchdown, Nebraska. Gentlemen, start your engines. This year, as in years past, the United States Auto Club conducted a nationwide study to determine which leading car rental company has the best conditioned cars. Hundreds of cars were tested. Over 36,000 individual items were inspected, from brakes to ashtrays. And for the fourth time, National Car Rental beat Hertz, Avis, and Budget, hands down. National Car Rental, number one in car condition. 
You won't believe what's happening inside your muffler. Rust that starts on the inside is eating its way through. The Napa Advantage muffler with Absorbite helps prevent internal rust. The inside of this muffler was not protected with Absorbite. This muffler was. You can see the difference. The Napa Advantage is even covered by a lifetime warranty. Of course, you may never have to use it. The Napa Advantage, it puts rust at a disadvantage. Available at thousands of Napa outlets. The New York Giants feel this could be their year. The Dallas Cowboys have pinned their hopes on the backfield of Dorsett and Walker. It's the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Some folks have everything, don't they? Are your feet warm? Nebraska will kick off now to the Florida State Seminoles. Keith Ross and Darren Holloman are the deep people. 5.15 to go in the third quarter. And at the 17-17 ball game. Just about what we thought might happen. Short kick. And it's Holloman. Down at the 24. The story on Pat Carter, tight end for Florida State. Had his ankle wrapped a little while ago. Let's check it out. Well, Keith, I was with Pat Carter, the tight end for Florida State. He had to agonize as Nebraska marched up the field. But he is back in the game, although limping slightly as I saw him get back out there. It was one of the fastest tape jobs I've seen in a while. Back to you. So Jim Ferguson now, with his instructions, comes to the field. 24-yard line, first down. Dane Williams, the fullback, and Sammy Smith, the tailback. Or I back if you like. Ferguson takes it to Smith, gets his pass away, and the pass is incomplete. And that was one that Chip should not have thrown because Dane Williams was covered completely. You know, I think I disagree with you there, Keith, though, because Ferguson dropped back to throw. He looked out there and he saw Williams was covered. He checked off, went to the middle, nobody else was open, so then he threw it away, threw it high and out of bounds. Sammy Smith going around the left corner might have been available if he'd had a little more time. But he ran out of time. He threw it away rather than take the sack. Mark play. Second down, 10. Smith. And he turned his flag down as Smith goes up across the 25 for about a yard, yard and a half. Roderick Thomas, the man on the tackle. Let's see about the penalty. It's a clip against Florida State. Even five minutes to go in the third quarter. The Seminoles now making mistakes and hurting themselves as we look ahead to our premiere of Monday Night Football, the New York Giants and the Dallas Cowboys from Irving, Texas at 9 Eastern time next Monday night here on ABC. Kicks off the season. Cowboys did not go too well during the preseason. Giants get John Morris Shipping back. That'll help them. Against the offense. Half the distance. Second down. So the ball comes all the way back to the 12, just inside the 13. They've got to come to the 34 for their first down. Ferguson to throw. Pressure on him. Can't get it away. Sack back on the two. Roderick Thomas and Danny Newton. There is nothing more important in college football now than the weight room. See this guy right here? Alvin Trophy candidate, Lombardi Trophy candidate, came into this school 227 pounds. Now he's over 280. He's fast. He's strong. They say half a plan defense is wanting to. He wants to. He thrives on it. And that's a great sack. And now the Seminoles are really in the hole. Third down. At about 31 yards. Send it up the middle to Smith, and there's a yard, and that's all. So in will come Lewis Perry to punt out of his end zone, and he isn't going to have a whole lot of room. No, but he is experienced, and he's one of the better punters that we'll see for a while. So if anybody can get it out of there, it is Barry. But he needs a good snap. Let's see if the Huskers load up and go after him, or if no, they're going to come back and look for the return, because they know they're going to accept the ball. 
good field position if they handle it all right. And return it some, they'll have very good field position, but it's almost blocked anyway. Number 17, Cleo Miller, almost got in there and blocked that thing. It's fair caught by Vaughn Shepard out at the Cornhusker 49. Good kick, 49-yard punt by Lewis Berry out of the end zone. This is it, the biggest car buying news in decades. Chevrolet announces the big one. An unprecedented 2.9 annual percentage rate. GMAC's lowest finance rate ever is now available on every new 86 Chevy car and most trucks. Or you can choose direct cash rebates up to $1,000 depending on models selected. 2.9%. News this big and a rate this low won't last. Hurry. This is the big one. There's never been a sale like it. You really want to appreciate the Coors difference. Less heavy, easy drinking. You try to spend some time doing this. Oh, yeah. Coors is the one. Former Mississippi State quarterback Rocky Felter debuted as head coach tonight for the Maroon, and they beat Syracuse 24-17 at the Carrier Dome. Last year, they beat them 34-3, or 30-3, I should say. And that is a disappointing loss for Syracuse, which had high expectations. Last year, Illinois stumbled under the weight of great expectations. This year, they are rather quietly perceived in preseason. And they opened with an easy victory over Howard Schnellenberger's Louisville team, 23 to nothing, as new quarterback Shane Lamb, who'd never thrown a pass before for Illinois, was 13 of 24 for 223 yards and had a touchdown pass. Back to Lincoln. Watch this, Lewis Berry punting out of the end zone. Number 17, senior cornerback Cleo Miller is gonna come flying in there and almost block that punt. But he missed it, and Berry produced a 49-yarder out of the end zone to put Nebraska in possession of the ball. First down at their own 49. Last time the Huskers had it, they put it in the end zone to tie it, 17-17. Well, let's see what happens now. Taylor keeps it. Pick up four yards on the carry, close to five, before Fred Jones searched through the debris and found him. Linebackers are getting a workout now. Nebraska has found something that's working, and it's that option play. They're optioning the end, so they keep going back to it. So the linebackers now have to really scrape off and get there quickly. Up the middle goes the big fullback, Ken Kalen, and Kalen is inside the 35 for a Nebraska first down. Starting to take over the line of scrimmage, it would appear. That is exactly right. They are starting to control that line of scrimmage. But another thing, Keith, we just talked about the effectiveness they're finding on the corner. The linebackers have to scrape and get there quickly. But what happens that time? They came back in the middle. The linebackers weren't there. They're worried about the, the corner. So the mixture plays well. Taylor. Goes outside to Keith Jones. He gets a little bit of a corner and turns it. They'll be two yards short of the first down. Boy, when he turns on the Jets, he does haul it out of there, doesn't he? 4-3-3 three, three speed. That's not even fair. Nebraska came in, we mentioned at the top of the show, playing with an awful lot of young talent. I mean, these guys are, are very young. It's a young football team. And I think they're starting to feel more comfortable now with a half under their belt. They come out here in the second half. It looks like they've got some uh, new vigor, more confidence. Goes to Jones again, and a big hole over the right side for the first down. Brad Jones brings down Keith Jones, but John McCormick and company on the right side opened a big hole for him with help from the lead block of Ken Kalis. Linebackers are getting a workout. You can see in the expression on his face. Took a pretty good lick that time. He also delivered a pretty good lick, but Keith Jones is a tough guy. Now, there's Fred Jones, who's 6'3", 241 pounds, and he met Keith Jones. And Keith Jones, is, he's put his weight up to 195 pounds now. Jones goes in motion. Taylor hands the ball off to Shepard, and Shepard coming, counting over the left side. 
We'll have a couple of yards on the carry. You mentioned a while ago that Jones seemed to be warming to the tour. His first 11 carries, 21 yards. But his last six carries, he's up about 35, 36 yards. And again, it goes back to the weight training program they have here at Nebraska. You know, it's interesting how big and how strong these players get over a period of time. He came in at 170 pounds, maybe a little bit heavier, 175. He's almost 200 now. Second down and 10 as he uh, literally got no gain out of it. Should be a penalty flag. Ball was thrown to Rod Smith. Smith was taken down by Martin Mayhew. And a flag comes whistling out of the pocket. Martin's a little bit upset. Didn't think it should have been called. I didn't think there was any question about it. Here it is again. It's just that quick reverse two-step drop and throw. It's a quick slant in pattern. Now here comes the hit. Watch and see if the hit is before the ball. That doesn't show it very well. That's difficult to see. This should tell you. There's the hit right there. See the left arm coming down on his his shoulder and his receiving arm. Good call, pass interference. Nebraska has the football first down at the Florida State 12. 51 seconds to go in the third quarter in a 17-17 ball game. <laughs> Taylor still got it. Got a man. Touchdown. Todd Milliken. needed that. Something to soothe your face. Thanks. I needed that. Something to smooth your face. Thanks. I needed that. Something to tone, to tighten, to brace your face and help get you going. Thanks. I needed that. You're not finished shaving till you've used Skin Bracer Aftershave after every shave. It has what your face needs. Skin Bracer. Five Styling originated in Europe, where they value design. It is built in Japan, where they value efficiency. And it is sold at your Chevrolet dealer, where they still value value. Now the big ones. Get 2.9% financing or up to $1,000 cash rebates on new 86 Chevy cars. Lou Holtz makes his debut as coach of Notre Dame. Michigan's Jim Harbaugh plans a Big Ten welcome. CFA football continues next Saturday on ABC Sports. Nebraska scoring drive after that 49-yard punt by Lewis Berry. They just simply couldn't control the Cornhuskers as uh, Steve Taylor is, is commanding the night. And a dandy zip to his tight end Todd Milliken here all alone after the waggle play. And with 45 seconds to go in the third quarter, it's 24-17. Cornhuskers as Klein gets ready to kick off the Florida State. Remember the end of the second quarter? What happened? Uh, let's see what happens here. Florida State's got some more lightning in their bucket. Klein hangs it up there pretty well. It is Holloman. Darren Holloman, the speedster, finds a little hole, gets out to about the 29-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 for the Seminoles, and an even 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Leroy Etienne brought him down. First down and 10. Darren Holloman, wide receiver, returned the kick. You know, he missed the first three practices of the preseason because they needed to attend flight school. He's in his fourth year of ROTC flight school. Now, that's the guy that can fly. <laughs> Florida State in the third quarter so far, nine plays, zero yards, and zero first down. And they're behind by seven. Kip Ferguson pitches to Sammy Smith. And 
Smith is drilled and driven back. Number 19, Brian Siebler, and number 35, Kevin Parsons, doing the job on him. And the clock is rolling now at less than 30 seconds. That is only the seventh Florida State run that has gained more than one yard. That one was good for four. 15 seconds, seven holes, have time for one more in this quarter. Ferguson takes it to Smith. And goes down. He was looking downfield. Every white shirt had a red shirt hanging on to it. Danny Noonan finally fought through the traffic. Got a big hand on him and brought him down to end the third quarter of play. So, with just 15 minutes to go, the home team, the Nebraska Ford Huskers, lead the Florida State Seminoles 24 to 17. Feel the power, feel the heat, and kick of energy from good whole wheat. Name is Wheaties, not too sweet, just a big bad hit of good whole wheat. The City, premiering two weeks from tonight. Let's review some smart reasons to change where you bank. Visa and MasterCard. We have one of the lowest rates in the state. And loans for just about anything. Smart money loans at competitive rates. Variety is the spice of life. Discount brokerage, high interest term certificates, money market and checking accounts, IRAs. My money grows at fantastic rates. And it's safe and secure. Are you close by? At over 60 locations across the state. I know you. At the end of the nearest rainbow. For more than 50 years, Nebraska Furniture Mart has had the best carpet prices, quality, and selection. We buy in quantity, so we buy for less and then pass the savings on to you. No gimmicks, no tricks, just honest values on quality carpeting. See all the newest colors and styles, including an incredible selection of Easy Care Monsanto wear dated carpet with up to a 10 year warranty. Monsanto and Nebraska Furniture Mart, the names to know now and for years to come. Good evening. Today marks the first anniversary of Nebraska's mandatory seatbelt law. Seatbelt survivors celebrate. We'll have that story on Newswatch 7 after Nebraska football. Feel good about that. When the Huskers are home, everybody turns out in red. And the home team leading, as we noted, 24 to 17 with one quarter to play. Right now, it is third down and 10 for the Florida State Seminoles at their own 29-yard line. Having a little trouble in the second half, getting something going. Ferguson looking, looking, looking. Gets his pass away to the sidelines and no chance on that one. Penalty flag and I may flag him for, I don't know, I did, all three men were flying through the air when they went to the sideline. Randy White, the intended receiver. They're gonna call him for a personal foul, late hit out of bounds and they obviously believe it was flagrant. Certainly legal. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see anything. I don't see anything either. Have a personal foul. Load hit. Get some defense. We'll stay. Contact was made about a yard out of bounds, but uh, well, here that comes your they're, they're not looking at. Uh, well, but Fryer may have come down on him when he was on the ground. Yeah, right. Well, that could warrant it. Then. Couldn't see that because of the players gathered around it. Nonetheless, Florida State will take the penalty and they'll take the pickup for a first down to the 44. And Ferguson pitches to Sammy Smith on a sweep. Whoa, if he cuts inside left, he's 
still run it. Maybe he couldn't get his footing down for that sharper cut. Third quarter steps. This is interesting. You can see the rushing yardage and how it has really gone now heavily in the favor of Nebraska. But now let's go down to the total yards. The, the 175 yards, total yards gained by Florida State is two less than they had at halftime. So they lost two in the third quarter. Well, that's the first first down they've had in the second half. Second down. Short five. Smith coming this way. Drilled backwards. Losing a yard on the play. Mark Munford and Tony Holloway. Defensively for Nebraska. Numbers 91 and 41. Bobby Bowden is one of the most innovative coaches, I think, in college football. And I just have that feeling that he's going to come up with a little something special soon. Well, now might be a good time. Third down and at least five from the 49. Trailing by seven in the fourth quarter. Ferguson runs away from Munford, but he cannot run away from Danny Noonan. Munford came up the middle on a blitz. Ferguson Nimble put it away from him, but Danny Noonan, the big middle guard, was right there to throw him out of bounds. Danny Noonan is some kind of impressive. We're talking about weights. Well, we'll get to that subject to Danny Noonan here in just a moment as Lewis Perry stands at the front on fourth down. Oh, almost blocked again by Cleo Miller. He touched it. He got a piece of it, and it killed part of the kick. So it's a short kick down to the 33-yard line because Miller got a piece of it, 24 yards. Take a look at this. Danny Noonan before, or when he first came to Nebraska. All right, 227 pounds. This is what he looks like today. 280 pounds. Well, we'll take you down with Al in a moment and show you how this all came about. Right now it is first down Nebraska at their own 33. John Kelly and Micah Heibel in the backfield. Heibel the fullback, Kelly the eye back. Inside it goes to Heibel. And the junior from Lincoln picks up a couple of yards up to about the 35. Now make it three yards to the 36. Now let's go to hell. Keith, as you can see, when it comes to weight training, these Cornhuskers are no dumbbells. They've got enough room here and enough equipment to have every player train with weights at the same time. The equipment in here worth about $500,000. They track it all with computers, and that's how someone like Danny Noonan gets to be so big. And I'll tell you, you just walk in here, you feel strong. And, yeah, it works. Back to you. <laughs> Carter gets tangled up, but then untangles and breaks loose. Steve Taylor it is, and he moves to the 42, close to the 43-yard line. When Jerry Claiborne came to the University of Maryland, he brought with him a very solid weight program. And I played with a guy by the name of Randy White. And Randy came in as a fullback, about 210 pounds, and he turned into a manster, half man, half monster, they call him out in Dallas. And you know what he's done in pro football. He's probably the best player ever to play that position for the Cowboys. Change are in for the measurement. And they're just short. So that'll bring up third down and a foot. Well, weight training has been part of the new generation, if you will, of conditioning athletes and virtually all. Because with it now, they also bring in flexibility. There was that. Well, Boyd Epley runs the program here in Nebraska. And He's got a catalog on everybody who's been through here. He can tell you how much, how high they jumped when they came and how high they jumped when they left. I jumped as high as Danny Newman told me to. <laughs> Goes to the eye back, Kelly, and John Kelly. Knocked off of his feet up just past the 46 by Fred Jones. So Fred Jones has had a busy night, getting up a little slow now, probably getting a little tired. Those are the top 10 scores. This day, involving teams ranked in the top ten. So I'll let you look at them. As Nebraska now will have a first down, just past their 46. Penalty flag. 
whistle stopping it as Taylor puts it in the air and it is incomplete. Let's see about the penalty call here. It's against Nebraska. So they'll mark off five. The Chrysler Cup from Potomac, Maryland tomorrow. That is a, a new event in golf. The top U.S. senior money winners on the PGA Tour, captained by Arnold Palmer, competing uh, against uh, an international group led by Gary Player. We'll have live coverage beginning tomorrow at 4 Eastern time here on ABC Sports. I belong to the TPC club there in Avondale. You know what Palmer did last week, though? I, two, two holes in one, two oh. straight days. Same Believe hole. That? Same club, same him. hole. That's a tough track. Taylor gets it away, and he's got a man over there, Rob Schnitzler, and the senior from Battle Creek, Nebraska, brings it in. But short, I believe, of the first down. Yes, it is. by 32. a half a yard. Well, it's Second more than that. It's one. close to a yard. Second down and one. Now let's see if uh, Nebraska tries to go for it here. No, they'll take the first down. Hybels gets the ball and uh, body past the marker. And it'll be first down at the Florida State 43. You and I were on the same page that time. I was thinking that's the perfect time to go deep. It was second and short. They call that a waste down. You know you can always come back on third down and get the first down. It's good time to go to the end zone, try for a touchdown. But instead, they settle for the first down. You know, John Kelly, the fullback in there now for, or the tailback, rather, for Nebraska. With all the adverse publicity in college sports, it's nice to see somebody like that that belongs to the National Honor Society. Taylor is caught and hanging on is 78 Eric Hayes, a 285 pound freshman from Tampa. And Big Eric got a hold of a hind leg and he wasn't about to turn it loose. It's dangerous to stay up like that once you're nailed. Here's the penetration now made on the inside. Came through the gap, just shot the gap virtually untouched with Eric Hayes. Once he got a hand on him, he wasn't going to let Steve Taylor go. He weighs 289 pounds. Oh, he'd be like, that's like a tree falling on him. Second down. <laughs> Loss on the play is back outside the 46, where it's second down and 13, and the Nebraska Cornhuskers have called a timeout with 10 minutes and 18 seconds to play in the football game and leading 24 to 17. This is today's Chevrolet S10 Blazer. For the fun, for the chores, for the town, for the great outdoors, it's all there for you. Weekends, work, or just plain cruising, Chevy S10 Blazer can do it all with versatility, style, and a touch of fun. No wonder it's America's favorite sport utility vehicle. Now the big one. Get 2.9% financing or up to $750 cash rebates on most new 86 Chevy trucks. Welcome to the Silver Bullet, home of a cold Coors Light. Rod, do you work out? Yeah, I belong to a club. Here's your Coors Light. Yeah, I'm thinking about joining a club, but I can't seem to find a good enough reason. I mean, is a flat stomach a good enough reason? Nope. Building up my endurance? Nope. <laughs> Big muscles? No. See the club, Rob? Yeah. <laughs> oh! What's the name of that club? There's no slowing down Rob? with the silver Rob. bullet tonight. There's new concern about travel abroad, how the terror can be stopped, which airports are vulnerable, and why security failed. Monday, watch ABC's World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Here's the other heavyweight boxing result from Las Vegas tonight, Michael Spinks. With a TKO of Stefan Tankstad in the fourth round, retained his IBF heavyweight championship, and Spinks now remains the central figure in the ongoing heavyweight championship unification tournament. Theoretically, the last fight in the tournament will be someone against Michael Spinks. So Spinks retains his IBF crown with an easy win over Tankstad. Back to you, Keith. All right, Jim, thanks very much. Now we have Nebraska on the Florida State side of the field. Second down and 13. Close to 14, actually. And the Seminoles get pushed around a bit here in the second half. Steve Taylor drops the throw. Let's it go down the sidelines. Passes. Completes to Vaughn Shepard. And touchdown.
perfect throw, good play action fake by Taylor. Now he just stands there and waits for Von Shepard to blow by the defensive back. Had to be a mistake on the DB that side. And the coverage, there had to be a mix up there. Yeah, but that kid can run. He is a speedster. The extra point is good. It is a 46-yard touchdown play, and it propels Nebraska into a 14-point lead. Session, punt, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Kicking off now to Keith Ross and Darren Holloman, the deep people for Florida State. Tough return by Keith Ross by out to the 36. Let's take another look at the touchdown play, the pass from Taylor to Von Shepard. Now the defensive back on that side of the field for Florida State is Alfonso Williams. He's just a sophomore. There had to be a mix-up here. He blew the coverage. Alfonso Williams was a late add to the traveling squad. He replaced Lonnie Sutton, who didn't make the trip. Now how dangerous is Von Shepard? I'll tell you, he ran the ball twice last year against Oklahoma and picked up 65 yards. Oklahoma had the nation's best defense, four or five speed. Victor Floyd is into the game, first time since the first possession at tailback. Chip Ferguson throws, and he's lucky to get that one back. It was a sideline pattern. If there had been a little more daylight over there, I don't know about what that pass might not have been intercepted. Pass intended for Pat White, a wide receiver freshman. I like that guy right there, Bobby Bowden. He still has 10 minutes left to play. He's two touchdowns behind Nebraska. Let's see what he pulls out. The quarterback sack by number 99, Neil Smith, the junior from New Orleans. Nebraska has now established property rights in the bridges. Fairly evident how much they missed John Ionetta and Jamie Duke from last year on that offensive line. They've had to rebuild it. And a point that should be made is that Florida State had one of the best recruiting years ever from anybody in the country a year ago. And most of them were offensive and defensive linemen. They're being redshirted this year. Florida State may be a year away from national championship contention. Third down and about 20. Ferguson's got a man out of here. Floyd, the tailback. And he's out of bounds at the 35, just over the 35, to pick up about 10 on the play. And there's a penalty flag. Brian Davis, number five. Roughing the passer against Nebraska. So, though Chip Ferguson had to take some punishment, it's a break for the Seminoles as the ball will come on up field. That is a break. They want to keep this offensive drive alive. They have to. They need to score badly. But it would have been fourth down. It would have been. That's right. They need to score on this drive. Nine minutes and seven seconds to play in the ball game as the ball's marked just near the 45. Roughing the foul, roughing the passer against the defense, first down. That is a big moment in this ball game because otherwise they're punting on fourth and 20 deep out of their own area, and now they've got it first down up close to the 45. And punting to a team that has dominated the time of possession. The offense has utilized the clock extremely well. They've had the football most of the game. Floyd. He ran over the stack and picked up six yards. Good run by Floyd, brought down by Kevin Parsons. Parsons. And Nabler making the tackle. Scott Demare is in the ball game, a flanker freshman, Miami, six footer. Floyd comes out of the backfield now for Florida State. Replaced by Sammy Smith. That's Demare in motion. Handed inside to the fullback, Dane Williams. 
I think that's the play that Dane ran 36 yards for a touchdown on. No, it isn't either. He, uh, he had the sweep back to the left side. Uh, but he ran had a 36-yarder against Toledo last week for a touchdown. Showed outstanding balance in doing it, too. Had his feet cut out from under him. Caught himself with one arm and never went down. Regained his balance and ran the 36 yards. Third down and two. Makes it to Sammy Smith and Brad Tyre ate him up. Knocked him all the way back to the 45 yard line. That is the sixth sack of the Florida State quarterback by the Nebraska defense tonight. They're just laying their ears back and coming now. Nebraska knows it can control the offensive line of scrimmage. The outside contained men are doing their job. So the inside guys, the down linemen like this, can just fly at the quarterback. Barry in the punt, just gets it away. And again, it was tipped by a Nebraska rusher, and he doesn't get much out of it. The last time it was tipped, 24 yards. This time, Danny Noonan penetrated and got a piece of it, and it traveled 27 yards. And Nebraska has the ball back, first down at their own 31. This is it, the biggest car buying news in decades. Chevrolet announces the big one. An unprecedented 2.9 annual percentage rate. GMAC's lowest finance rate ever is now available on every new 86 Chevy car and most trucks. Or you can choose direct cash rebates up to $1,000 depending on models selected. 2.9%. News this big and a rate this low won't last. Hurry. This is the big one. There's never been a sale like it. You know, it kind of makes you wonder. I mean, why does Coors develop their own special barley? Have their own fleet of refrigerated trucks? They even designed and built their own malt house. Well, there's a saying. When you want it done right, do it yourself. This <laughs> is right. Maybe the upset of the weekend if it holds and a great story. Southwestern Louisiana needed contributions from businesses in Lafayette to tempt Oklahoma State to town with a $200,000 guarantee. Now it may turn out to be a trip that the Cowboys will deeply regret as Southwestern Louisiana in its first game ever against a Big 8 team leads 13-3 with less than five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. First game for the new Cajun coach Nelson Stokely, an old LSU quarterback. Keith? Oh, I tell you, Nelson will be dancing all over the universe tomorrow if he can hang on and pull that one out, wouldn't he? Steve Taylor on the game tonight, 8 out of 14 passing, 107 yards and two touchdowns for Nebraska. He has run 19 times for 125 yards and two touchdowns. Now, I ask you, is there any question about who is going to be playing quarterback at the University of Nebraska for three years? He has passed his last season totals in tonight's opening game. First down, Huskers, from the 31. Taylor going down the line, gives the ball away ball to the fullback, Micah Heibel. And Heibel bangs his way out to about the 35, picking up four yards on that carry. Bobby Bowden's gonna find out an awful lot about his football team in the next six minutes and 50 seconds. Down by two touchdowns, time running out. Find out what kind of character they have. Just saw it out of McGowan. Good play, strong tackle. He's not quitting yet. Second down and six. Taylor still got this one. And Steve Taylor has a first down at the 45. Martin Mayhew brought him down. Six and a half minutes to go in this game. And next Saturday at 3 Eastern time, we'll be at South Bend, Indiana. The Michigan Wolverines visiting the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame as Lou Holtz debuts, and Bo Schembechler brings a team that I personally think is as good as any team in the country. They didn't lose too many people, and they've got a lot back, including Harbaugh, their fine quarterback. So I think that'll be a heck of a football game. It'll be fun to watch Lou Holtz see what he's done at Notre Dame. This is John Kelly, and Kelly rambles for a first down for Nebraska right about the 45-yard line of Florida State. 
You're watching CFA football on ABC. Let's take a five second pause so that our affiliates can tell you just exactly who they are. This is KETV, Channel 7. 31-17, Nebraska leading. It was 17-10 halftime, Florida State leading. But Nebraska has come roaring back to dominate the ball game in the second half. John Kelly takes a hard hit from Greg Newell, the free safety at the 41. When you start looking at the game totals, uh, when you pick it up tomorrow, it'll probably look like Nebraska dominated the game from a statistical point of view. But Florida State led at the end of the first half. And it looked like they were going to hang right in there. But in the second half, the struggle in the trenches turned Nebraska's way. And uh, that stat right there will tell you much about what has happened on the field. Florida State in the second half is minus two yards. And now okay, the Nebraska offensive Kelly. front is just blowing them out of their tracks. Florida State is a fine football team, but Nebraska, just call it a maturation process. The young, inexperienced players for Nebraska gained that maturity in the first half, gained a lot of confidence. They came out, now here they are dominating. I believe Nebraska has just put themselves, although it's very early, but has just put themselves in the hunt for the national championship. I think they can win the rest of their schedule until they meet Oklahoma late. Mark Diaz is now in at tight end. The second unit's in there right now as Taylor, the starting quarterback, continues to play that position. But you've got Kevin Leitner, 285. You've got Michael Hoefler, 255. John Nichols, 265. And Deketer, 265. Brad Johnson, 265. Those are the, that's the second lot. And the big guys who've been playing most of the game up front are even bigger. You know, you mentioned that Nebraska recruits guys with big frames. I think that's right. They look at their feet, get guys they can, big feet they can grow into them. <laughs> Steve Taylor, who's had a huge night, gets his pass away. Pass is complete to Willie Griffin. And it's first down, Cornhuskers down around the Florida State 20. He's got some agility, doesn't he? Stop on a dime and give you nine cents change. He turned his whole body around to throw that pass. There's the story of the second half, and that's exactly why the Nebraska Cornhuskers have run off 21 and answered points. Hey, that was a great answer. Where'd you learn about computers? In the Army. Uh, you were in the Army? Yeah. And now they're helping pay your way through college. How come you know so much? How do you think I got here? Qualify for the GI Bill and the Army College Fund and earn $17,000 for college for only a two-year enlistment or $25,200 for a four-year enlistment. What you doing, Aunt? Airborne. You were airborne? Find your future in the Army. You used to jump out of airplanes? Two out of three Indy drivers rely on STP oil treatment because when it comes down to it, STP adds extra lubrication to reduce engine wear in whatever you drive. STP. This water damage is going to run $750. What would have stopped it? Thompson's Water Seal protects wood, brick, and concrete with its special waterproofing formula. Thompson's Water Seal, a great defense against repair expense. Top U.S. senior money winners are led by Arnold Palmer. Gary Player heads an international field. The Chrysler Cup, live tomorrow on ABC Sports. to 17 ball game. There's L down in amongst the middle of them somewhere there, I think. Are you musically inclined, Keith? No. Get rid of that rumor right now. First down at the 20 yard line of Florida State. Taylor stays in there at quarterback. Makes the handoff. No, he gave it away that time. He is so quick coming off that snap, off that reverse pivot. He handed it away to Michael, Micah Heibel that time. 
And the fullback picked up three. And now Second Nebraska down, seven, beginning to substitute seven, more and more. They're alternating people along that front line. They're using their third tight end of the night now. Mark Diaz is back in. John Kelly is the eye back. And on second and seven, Taylor keeps it and slips inside to the 14. When they're going away from me, I have to wait till I see commit himself to know whether or not he's got the ball. And you know, the, the Florida State team, the linebackers on the other side of the line of scrimmage have that same problem. The reason being, if they even hesitate for that fake to the, the dive man, Taylor's already around the corner. Nebraska's next game will be Illinois at Champaign, and Florida State will be playing North Carolina at home. Carolina won big today. Third down and four. Taylor back to throw it. He goes to the short man down inside the five, and the pass is caught, but there is a penalty flag. Mark Diaz, the tight end, made the catch. Well, let's see about the call. It is a face mask against the offense somebody on the offensive side grabs the defensive player's face mask apparently so while they mark it off can we go to Al Trotwick Keith I know you've seen a lot of football games but you've got a long way to go in comparison to this man on September 23rd Gil Saunders will turn 91 he's seen every game that Nebraska has played since 1923 Gil how does this night stack up against all the games you've seen well this has been an exceptional night it's kind of come and gone so to speak did you ever think you'd see a night game at Memorial Stadium? Never. No, this is a big surprise. Well, yeah. now you've seen everything. Now I've seen everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Gil. Congratulations on your birthday coming up. Well, thank you. It's nice of you to come see me. I appreciate it. All right, Keith, <laughs> back to you. I'll bet in 91 years he's seen a lot. The football comes back to the 19, where it is third down and nine after that penalty against the Cornhuskers. And the story on Steve Taylor reflected there and is running tonight. And now we're getting a um, penalty marched off against Nebraska. What is this one? Well, I guess they marked it, brought it back to the spot, and then backed it up. Huh? That's, what it, that's exactly what it was. They just... So third down back at the 29 after that 10-yard penalty. It'll make it third down and what, 20? Roughly. 91 years old. Yeah. That Al has the game changed over 91 years. Yeah. He's had a lot of fun being a Nebraska fan. Back goes Taylor to throw. Gets it away. Under pressure. He was looking at a big linebacker right in the eye, coming whistling at him, and he delivered the pass on a line to Willie Griffin, and Griffin pulled it in. Dedrick Dodge, a freshman from Mulberry, Florida, made the hit for the Seminoles. And now on fourth down and 12, in comes the kicking team with Dale Klein. Klein has missed from 49 and connected from 33 tonight. So it's been a good outing for Tom Osborne, despite the travail, turmoil that they've had to fight all week because of the NCAA penalty. Appealed and uh, stay granted for this game. Kick is up by Klein into the net. Good. And a decision will be made on their appeal next week, next Tuesday. 34 17 Huskers. When you set out to create the perfect home, start with the windows. The windows more people come home to. And we've got a minute and 23 seconds to play in the football game with Greg Barrios in to kick off now. He's a freshman. Tom so Osborne's going to season a freshman a little bit right here and let him kick off. A ball game in which they have control with very little time left to play. Hangs it up there for Keith Ross at the 11. And Ross is down at the 28. Well, we just met the gentleman of 91. Here's an old warrior. That's Billy Edwards. 75 a few days ago last week Billy brings the teams on and off the field controls the times out and that sort of stuff stands out in all kinds of weather 
and he'll still give you a hard time at 11 o'clock at night. What a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous individual he is. I spent many a rainy, snowy, hot afternoon with him. <laughs> First down for the Seminoles. As Chip Ferguson goes to throw it, dumps it off short underneath, and the pass is caught by Galen White, number 87, tied in. Tonight's game produced by Bob Goodrich. Bob has succeeded Chuck Howard as our game producer, directed by Larry Cam, who has succeeded Andy Sedaris. And back goes Ferguson to throw again to the sidelines, and it's incomplete, no good. Our technical director is Doug Schmidt, our associate director, Jack Graham, our technical manager, Gary Ricketts, our unit manager, Dennis Zabo, telecommunications, Hal Schmidt, and assistant to producer, Ray Schmoltz. Todd Barry is back as our spotter again this year. And a fellow named Dave Burnson keeping our stats again this year. That's been around so long, I can't remember how long they've been around. The rain's coming down again. It figures everybody's trying to get to their car and go home now as time has just about run out. And here is another sack of Chip Ferguson by Neil Smith. That's his second sack of the night and the seventh for the Nebraska defense with now 35 seconds to play in the game. Bobby Bowden will take him back, pump him back up mentally, get him ready, and this will be a fine Florida State football team. Oh, for, yeah. oh, for Nebraska, it's going to be an interesting week. They've got to find out what the ruling is for the NCAA and see if their appeal can be held. Florida State has called timeout. Never give up. They've got to punt it away. Clayma! Did you send those guys? Those came early on in the ball game where they really effectively killed the momentum. Last week, Florida State threw 41 times and did not have one sack. Right. Beautiful putt by Lewis Berry. Fair catch is called by Vaughn Shepard. And the Cornhuskers now, with just 19 picks remaining on the clock, will just simply run it out. They have the game in hand. It's a warm ending uh, for that man, Tom Osborne, and his football team after the week they've gone through. He sends Cleet Blakeman out to... Uh, Mop it up for Bobby Bowden. It's, uh, I want to tell you, Bobby's played four games here in this stadium with his Seminoles. They've split two and two, and folks, that ain't bad. If you don't know that, you've never come and tried to win a game at Nebraska. Risky business. Blakeman keeps on the option play and gets the clock rolling. And whistles now will stop it at about nine seconds or so. No, they just, they didn't stop it. I thought for a moment they were gonna whistle the clock dead. Florida State's second half offense, minus one yard. Only two first downs and both by penalty and the ball game is over. The Nebraska Cornhuskers open with an impressive 34 to 17 victory over the Florida State Seminoles. So it looks like it's gonna be another year in the Big Eight. Nebraska and Oklahoma. When it comes time to sell your home, consider this. Ten university officials will hook up on a conference telephone call with four members of the NCAA Committee on Eligibility Appeals. Nebraska will present its case. A decision on the appeal is expected tomorrow afternoon or Wednesday morning at the latest. At today's Extra Point Club Luncheon in Lincoln, Coach Tom Osborne talked about the NCAA ordeal. One of his opinions is that the matter should be kept within the university by taking passes away from the players. He definitely feels the one or two game suspensions are far too we harsh. We are being accused of being unethical, and so we say, okay, you know, this was unethical. We agree with that, but those kinds of things are supposed to be handled by the institution, and they shouldn't be handled uh, by loss of eligibility. So that is where we feel the severity of the penalty is, uh, is, not, uh, is not commensurate with what was done. The purpose of the rule is clearly stated in the book and the procedures. It's intended to cut down and, and eliminate scalping. And in this case, there is no evidence of scalping. See, so we feel like we have lived up to the spirit of the rule. But anyway, it'll be um, a matter of some interest uh, as to what happens to <laughs> tomorrow because we think we have a good football team, and we think we've put it together in the right way. Uh, we, we have not uh, bought players here. We are not accused of any recruiting violations. We've done everything we can to do it right, but uh, we do hope that uh, uh, common sense prevails here. 
and uh, we hope that we come out of it okay because we do feel we have a good football team if we can play them all. But uh, players make the game, and sometimes you have an image that you're, you're deep, you're powerful, and, and some people will honestly believe that we could hold out 60 players and 35 or 40 first and second teamers and still win a game. And if we can, then I'm Houdini. Incidentally, University of Chicago Athletic Director Mary Jean Mulvaney has disqualified herself from the appeals committee. Mulvaney attended and taught at the University of Nebraska, and she still has family living in Lincoln. So tomorrow, Nebraska's fate will be decided by just four committee members. There is some good news surrounding the Nebraska football program today. Two Huskers were named Big 8 Players of the Week. Linebacker Steve Forch returned to practice for the first time in a week, and Danny Noonan's hamstring pull is not serious. He also practiced. And for the first time since 1980, two Huskers have been named the Big 8 Players of the Week. Noonan, a senior defensive tackle, is the Big 8 Defensive Player of the Week for his performance in the Huskers' 34-17 win over Florida State. Noonan, number 95, sacked quarterback Chip Ferguson four times in the game. He had six tackles in all. On the other side of the ball, no surprise, sophomore quarterback Steve Taylor has been named the Big 8 Offensive Player of the Week. In his first start, Taylor rushed for 139 yards and two touchdowns.